All right, now we're live. How's it going, everybody? Um, let's see here. Let me switch over to that. Okay. Um, yeah, so today um, we have a special guest on. Um, this is Aiden Clune's mom, Amy Clune, and uh, she's going to be spending some time with us, um, talking to us a little bit about Aiden and his story and um, just giving us some background and talking about some up upcoming plans too um, for the spring for searching. So yeah, so uh, I'll turn it over to Amy. Um, um, so what... Um, what was what was Aiden like? If you could, I don't know, just go into maybe raising Aiden, what he was like growing up. Mm -hmm. So um, Aiden was a single child. You know, he was my only. He's my only son, and um, uh, you know, his dad wasn't in the picture, so I was definitely like completely single mom situation. And um, he was just so adorable. <laughs> he was super cute, um, beautiful child, and. He was, he's always been super creative, which is kind of like, you know, kind of runs in my side of the family. Um, he loved drawing. He would, uh, he, he had one of these little, um, those Etch-a-Sketch things where you can use a stylus and then you wipe it clean, you know? Yep. And he was constantly drawing, drawing, and he was crazy about Thomas the Train. And uh, he would draw train tracks. And, um, you know, one time he, this uh, guy, uh, the uh, cafe that we used to go to said, oh, my God, he, he just drew a perfect circle, <laughs> you know. But my son was always like, wipe it clean, wipe it clean. And he was just constantly drawing. Um, he was really sweet and sensitive. And uh, he loved Legos. He was obsessed with Legos. Um, we have all kinds of Star Wars Legos, you know. So he was very into Star Wars and just really obsessed. Like on Christmas, we, I would get him this huge Star Wars ship, you know, and he just would not stop until that thing was completely done. And uh, he, it just, uh, so Thomas the Train and then Star Wars, you know, like a lot of kids. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, I when, when um, he was fairly young, uh, like around uh, six, I believe, we were gonna move to Florida for, um, to be around more family because I have three sisters there. And um, it, things were getting really hard, but I, it was really difficult and I didn't know why, but I actually um, had cancer. Oh, I'm sorry to <laughs> and, hear that. Yeah, and I moved back to California. Um, really, it was, it was God who was helping me. I came back right at the right time. I got my um, my old job back. They, they called me and asked me to come back. I got my, because I was only gone five months, my insurance was instantly reinstated and I got like amazing medical care. But you know, Aiden had to go through that. It was really intense. I had everything that can be done to a cancer patient. I had really intense chemo. It was, it was hard on him. Now, at the same time that was happening, there was something going on with Aiden um, and he started um, having these really emotional outbursts and I didn't know what was going on. He was extremely tired and um, I, I knew something was going on. And, um, you know, he, I changed his lunch up one time to pretzels and bagels mm -hmm. and, um, and immediately he got worse and uh, he, he would come home crying saying, I can't play on the playground because I'm too tired, mommy. And he would come home and just like lay on the floor and play with his trains on, you know, uh -huh. about yeah. laying on the floor. Well, it turned out he had a uh, gluten. Uh, he, he didn't have uh, the full blown autoimmune, but he was gluten insensitive. Mm -hmm. And, and um, after 10 days off of gluten, he woke up. I mean, I couldn't wake him up. But that was, it was really concerning in the morning. I could not wake him up. It was, it was really scary. And, yeah. uh, 10 days after off of gluten, he woke up like a, just jumped out of bed and said, hi, mama, <laughs> you know, and um, was back to his um, self, but he had a really restricted diet. So that was like the first time like he was having these uh, either angry or really sad emotional outbursts and it was tied into gluten and he was off gluten for like uh, six, seven years and yeah. he, he eventually went back on it. Um, but, uh, you know, during that time, um, we moved schools a few times. Um, there was, 
you know, his, his life, he, he had, he had some bad interactions with people. Um, you know, right around that time, he was also asking about his dad a lot. Yeah. And getting upset about that. And it was starting to really bother him. And so I put him into counseling and then um, we moved to a charter school and there was an incident there, um, which I found out it involved somebody else who kind of like came up to him and, and wanted him to do something bad, you know, okay. and um, kind of convinced him to do this, uh, to scare somebody or something like that. And that child did not get in trouble, even though Aiden was like in the art room, minding his own business, you know, drawing because he loved drawing. They had a cartoonist there who, uh, who was teaching art classes there and Aiden loved this guy and would just be in the art room on his off time, drawing, 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 you know, he, he was, uh, loved drawing. So, um, what happened was, was that he became the villain in that whole situation. And, and, um, th I was told that, okay, so we've disciplined him. That's the end of it. But that I found out from Aiden, that was not the end of it. He was being separated out from the other kids. He was told he couldn't play with anybody, even though the other child could. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so I had to put him into therapy again. I put him into an art therapy with this wonderful husband and wife team. And they were really amazing. And, um, you know, that whole experience left Aiden feeling really bad about himself. But the fact was, is he did not mastermind that situation. He was sitting there minding his own business and somebody had a beef with their friend and said, uh, you know, I know you, that guy, that person has uh, bullied you. Let's, let's do this, you know? And, yeah. and that was their masterminded, you know, that the whole inception of that uh, incident was not, yeah, he's kind of being used. You know? yeah, yeah, he was being used to get back at this uh, friend, and um, and and he bore the brunt of it. And it's really made me angry over the years. I yanked him out of that school. You know, when he came home and was telling me what was still happening, I pulled him out and put him into another elementary school um, out in Glen Ellen. Wonderful school, uh, Dunbar. It's been, it's a hundred year old. Um, uh, elementary school. Wow. Okay. And they do a, they do a play every year. It's like a Western play. And, um, it's actually not <laughs> put on by this guy named Squire Friedel, who is, if anybody remembers the old Ronald McDonald commercials back in the seventies and eighties, it's okay. that Ron, Ron, Ronald McDonald. Oh, wow. That, <laughs> yeah. It's that guy. <laughs> it's, the, it's that Ronald McDonald. He, I don't know if they're still doing it. He was writing the plays, but, um, you know, there were the fires out here and I think they had to rebuild the stage, the whole stage and, you know, Dunbar, it was terrifying out here during the fires. So oh, like, yeah. there was a lot of stuff going on. I mean, we, we moved out here to Glen Ellen, then he um, started going to that school and there was the, you know, the Squire of Rydell thing. That's also where he uh, took, started taking guitar. Um, he took trombone which I thought, wow, he's, he wasn't a big kid. And this trombone was like as big as him, <laughs> But you know, I just said, go ahead, go, you know, play whatever you want. So he was playing trombone and learning. That's where he started learning guitar. Okay. And, and uh, he, he really liked the guitar. He loved it. He would come out and play it for me out in the living room and um, was always singing and playing guitar. And, uh, and then he got to do the play and his um, father um, came back into his life at that point and it made Aiden really happy you know at the time but what happened was was that relationship did not work out Aiden did not want to continue that relationship um and you know I I wanted him to you know have that you know father you know I yeah. wanted him to do that and I I tried to smooth things over see if we couldn't make it work but Aiden told me, you know, I, I just don't want to. And I said, okay, you know, you don't, you don't have to. Yeah. So he was going to the boys and girls uh, club, you know, after school during mm -hmm. um, elementary and, and um, part of middle school. But, you know, when he got 12, he started just riding the bus home. And while he was at the boys and girls club, he met 
uh, there was a, one of the uh, instructors there was a young man that Aiden just really liked. They had a sense of humor. Aiden had an incredible sense of humor. Just so, um, what's that that movie, um, Bride of Frankenstein with Gene oh, Wilder? Yep. Yeah. 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 So that humor, <laughs> Aiden, there was no humor that went over this kid's head. He was uh, very astute about humor. He oh, loved yeah. that show. Oh, we, yeah. watched, we watched that all the time. And I remember he brought this friend over and he said, this movie's really funny, you know? And this kid was like, what? I don't, I don't get this. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Mel but, Brooks um, is great. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So one day when Aiden, he was at uh, this one elementary school, he, it, it was the first elementary school he went to. He started singing Sweet Mystery of Life. Uh, at last I found him and um, he, he came home, he said the oh teacher said he couldn't sing that song. This was the oh one thing he did. He did not understand this, okay? He didn't understand yeah. it. And um, I said, oh, honey, you, you can't sing that song at school. And he's like, why not? And I said, well, it's just it's just uh, probably not appropriate. And he goes, why not? And I just said, oh, I'll tell you later, you know, but just don't sing that song yeah. <laughs> He didn't oh know what gosh. he was singing, but um, he, yeah, he, so he got, he got a lot of humor that, um, you know, like adult humor and stuff. He, I joked with him. We, you know, we had a, we liked to joke around with each other. Um, so he was going through the gluten thing that cleared up. We switched schools, we moved. Mm -hmm. um, he got a pet rabbit, Skippy, who he loved. And, um, and so now he had a, a pet and, you know, I was just trying to do anything just to kind of, you know, help him, uh, you know, feel self-esteem, you know, yeah. self-esteem. He was having issues with self-esteem. Yep. So, um, so it was around middle school that he, it was the end of middle school that he ended his relationship with his dad. I mean, he didn't really want to do that anymore. And, so he was in high school. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with like Sonoma. We're in the wine country. Yeah, um, Northern California. And that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty Beautiful. affluent area. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, Sonoma. There's a lot of affluent kids. And, you know, I was a single mom. And, and there's other, you know, single moms and stuff. But Aiden was just like feeling like an outsider. Yeah. And when he got to high school, he really started to feel that disparity, you know, between, you know, what he had and what other kids had. And it was, you know, it, it was just one more thing that was you yep. know, eating at him. Yeah. And um, I tried to tell him, I told him stories about my childhood, like, oh my gosh, you know, I grew up in the seventies with my mom was a single mom. She had four kids and five kids and six kids. And, you know, I worked every summer to buy my, my school clothes. Um, you know, I, I tell him like, Hey, I, I moved in with my dad. All of us went to live with my dad and the stepmother, and we lived in this big house, but we still weren't rich. I mean, people thought we were because of the house, but, but we actually, it was all in the house. Yeah. And so we all worked, you know, and in Michigan, a lot of people, all kids, everybody works, you know. And yep. yeah. So um, when Aiden, um, he, he got a job as soon as it was legal for him to get a job. And because he wanted a job, he wanted to buy things. He was a really hard worker. He got a job at a grocery store here in Glen Ellen, uh, Glen Ellen Market. And, um, you know, one time I was, I went to the store and he was, he wasn't working. He was with me and we were buying stuff and um, we were at the checkout and uh, there was this older gentleman behind us. And uh, I said, some, he said something about mom. And this guy turned to me and he says, is this your son? And I said, yes. And he goes, this, he goes, this is a, a great young man. He is such a, a joy, a really great uh, worker. He's so polite, and nice and helpful. And <laughs> you should be proud of him. He's a really nice kid. And I said, oh, thanks. I am. I'm, I'm totally proud of him. You know, he's, he bought a truck. He bought his own truck. He bought, um, like, you know, so he was on a guitar a lot now. Mm -hmm. He was writing music, playing a lot. He bought all these programs, you know, so that you can, you know, uh, record stuff. Yep. And um, he was buying, you know, 
all kind he bought his uh, cell phone because i i was like i can't get you a brand new iphone aiden <laughs> you know i can yeah. get you a samsung but i can't get you an iphone well he's like well i want an iphone so i'm gonna work for that and buy it <laughs> so he was he was working you know and then um so so in school he was doing pretty good you know he was he's very smart but um he sometimes would, he would slide on stuff because you know he knew that he could get by on just getting like he could get a b plus in this class that he didn't really particularly like so he wouldn't really study that much for or, or keep up on it too much but he would still get like a's and b's he was getting wow. really good grades a's and b's skating you know kind of skating so he was really smart but um sometimes he would just like slide on stuff and um so then you know he started to get you know a little down and he um i, I think his his freshman year he had this really nice girlfriend this, his first girlfriend and they lasted a little while he he kind of was fast and furious with the girls I, I told him one time please uh just slow down so he was <laughs> uh, i mean not shortly before he um he disappeared like months before he disappeared i said he was interested in another girl and i said aiden um why don't you take a break please just just take a break here and and um he was like no no you know so <laughs> yeah so right he, yeah so his first girlfriend you know it lasted a while she was really sweet and everything and then that came to an end and then he got this girlfriend um his junior year she, her I, I don't want to say her name but he loved her he loved her just loved her so much and and she was she was a very studious student and Aiden immediately started he, I mean she she was a task master she would come over we're going to study we're going <laughs> to do homework and immediately Aiden's grades went up to all A's you know <laughs> yeah from from like some B's and then suddenly they were all A's you know but he <laughs> he was always like a, a three point always 3.5 and above you know wow. And then he got like, you know, when he was studying with her, he, his grades shot up to always. And, <laughs> and um, it was at this time that, that something else uh, pretty disturbing. And um, it, it has to do with social media, which is a real problem, I think, right now for young people. Yeah. Um, I was in the kitchen right where I am right now. And he got a phone call. And um, it was kind of a strange phone call. So I was like sitting there. Uh, I was like, what's going on? And he got off the phone and he was like, oh, um, that's this girl. I don't really know her that well. And I'm going to, um, she wants, she's, she doesn't actually go to Sonoma High. She goes to the, uh, the other school for kids who are having issues. Oh, okay. There's like, there's like this separate little school. It's connected to Sonoma Valley High, but they, they have a separate building it's near the it's i think it's on campus but um it's for kids who are having issues yep. and she, she, he said uh, she's she's at rehab she's getting out of rehab and i said what you know and he, he she wants me to pick her up and i said why and uh he goes i don't mom I, you know i think people know that i'm a solid guy and that like i'm helpful and you know he was feeling really good about it i mm -hmm. i feel good that you know she felt like she could call me and she didn't want to see her parents right then. She just wanted to leave. And, and, and so I said, well, okay, um, you know, go ahead and pick her up, get his truck. So um, he picked her up and he came back. And uh, at this time he was with that girlfriend, but he felt like he was being a good friend. And he also felt like um, that he was a trusted, you know, that people viewed him as a good trustworthy person. Right. And I could see him kind of like, you know, yeah, she called me to, you know, that was, that's cool. He was feeling good about himself. Yeah. Well, um, a couple of days later, um, I came home from work and when I came in the door in the vestibule, um, I looked down at this paper bag and there was hair sticking out of it. I could tell it was Aiden's hair. And I looked in the bag, and uh, it was full of Aiden's hair. It was very disturbing. He had cut all his hair off. Wow. Oh, just on his own, or just somebody had cut his hair off? On his own. It was like he had just taken scissors and just... He, he liked to keep his hair 
kind of longish, you know? Uh-huh. So, I mean, we're talking about hair length like, like this, you know? Okay. And um, I'm like, oh, my God, what is going on? And so I called him. He was driving in his truck, and he was manic. He was like, hey, Mom. And I said, Aiden, what, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, what is going on with his hair? Oh, I, I just come ahead. I feel feel really good. I, I, you know, I, I'm glad I did it. Yeah. I, I said, Aiden, you, you can you come home? You, you're sounding, uh, you, you're not sounding like you're okay. What is going on? Nothing home. I'm just, you know, driving around, I'm loving life. And and I was like, uh, please come home. You just, you're, you're not sounding okay. Yeah. Um. So he wouldn't tell me what that was about and he tried to go on he kept a lot of secrets from me as he you know like a lot of teenagers do yeah what i found out later was this girl premeditatively i don't know why i think she was trying to break up him and his girlfriend Uh um she started videotaping him in the truck and she was reaching out uh, with his hand uh, and trying to grab his hand and Aiden's looking over at her. He showed me the video once. That's how I know, but he would not show me the title of the video. He had his hand over his phone. So I couldn't see what platform it was on and what the title was, but apparently it got over a million views and she titled it. My boyfriend has a girlfriend and she was trying. And then she was like saying like, he's cheating on me. This was not his girlfriend. He yeah. had, this was not somebody he even knew that well. Yeah. And and she like um, did this weird thing like to somehow demonize him. It was all fake. It was all uh, just, you know, uh, fabricated on her part. And it, and it um, broke up him and his girlfriend for a while. And but it, it came out that it wasn't true. And people started questioning it um, yeah. because they knew they knew her. And people started questioning it, and people kind of figured out figured it out that it was a fake thing that she did out of the blue. I, I don't really understand why someone would um, do that, but I know that they do this these things as, at school. You know, they try to start fights and videotape it, and upload it on, and, you know, and get all these views. It was I don't know what to say to that girl. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, that's, I think you're right. It is a real big problem right now with social media. So I just, I, I really don't know. It's and he, yeah. I mean, he told me about it later and when it had all died down and he said, I can tell you about it now, mom, because it's like buried in the internet. Now you'll never find it. It's gone. People are, people figured it out. And, um, but, uh, it was, it, it, it just completely, um, kind of, unnerved him destroyed him and and so you know it just it was it was a really bad experience for him um and he and he wouldn't tell me and so i had him in um uh, counseling off and on he was having problems i think it was right around this time you know he said mom i want to see a counselor and so here we go with kaiser um kaiser who was booking appointments six to eight weeks apart which is completely not helpful for someone who's in distress, emotional distress. It's, it's just not helpful at all. Yeah. And of course, then, um, you know, Governor Newsom here in California, he passed this uh, last summer, which was months too late for Aiden. Okay. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> He passed a, a bunch of laws that basically forced Kaiser and other um, health outfits to um, to treat uh, mental health uh, people and give them appointments as they would if they were um, sick. You know, they had to do it within oh, okay. seven days. And they, they couldn't say anymore like, OK, first we'll have this appointment. So you couldn't book anything like weekly, even like you, they'd say, okay, first we'll book this appointment. And then after you're done with this appointment, we'll book another one, uh, six to eight weeks out. And I was furious. I was on, I could see what was happening to Aiden, that he was getting depressed. And I remember being on the phone outside of my work and I was screaming at Kaiser. I was screaming at them that they had to help me. And they're like, oh, okay, well, you know, we'll put you through to our, um, we can outsource it through Beacon. 
I had to scream and cry and, and I was hysterical. And um, that's how I got him uh, into Beacon. And we got a, a, a therapist in Sonoma. And so he was he was with her for a while. And then he said, OK, mom, I, I, I don't want to yeah, I don't want I want to stop th uh, therapy. And I said, OK. So um, then, uh, you know, so here, here was just like all these series of issues and problems that he was having. Yeah. And then the pandemic hit and uh, I worked at a grocery store and all of the older grocery workers just like fled, you know. Yeah. So it was, it was nothing but teenagers at that point. And um, he worked full time, you know, instead of working, um, you know, like the, the weekends and mm -hmm. like a four hour shift. He was working full time and uh, and I was also an essential worker. Because we were uh, the job that I have is tied into the um, telecommunications, and so um, everybody in my office was gone, and it was just me and the owner, the project manager, the accountant, and me. And so um, I wasn't able to come home for eight, and I was, mis you know, I had to, I had to be there at the office and try and do uh, pick up all these tasks that people can do in person. Yeah. And um, that's when Aiden started to really, really take a turn to the, the worst. He was um, sleeping and he was staying up. He, and I had to run home a few times when he was having um, he was having issues with his girlfriend and he was just going to pieces. And I, I would just say at work, like, um, I have to go home. There's like, a, you know, a problem at home. And, and Aiden would just... Um, be out of his mind and, and so school he wasn't waking up i was trying to wake him up every morning he hated it he would scream at me um and i was like aiden you have to you know you have to open your laptop and get on to school please and it was really hard for me to 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 leave him like that and to go to work um yeah. it was it was horrible time for for everybody yeah. um and a lot of kids were um you know some some kids some kids that zoom thing it took away a lot of distractions for them and they actually thrived on zoom you know i think yeah. it removed all that social stuff all, all the stuff going on at school it just like they were able to focus but for a lot of kids just that uh, isolation yeah. and um lack of social interaction was um you know it hurt a lot of kids yeah. a lot of kids were having issues so at this time, I'm again, I'm trying to get him through Beacon. I'm, you know, get him screaming and crying. There's like nobody available. Um, I finally get him on the Beacon again. And we uh, found a, a guy, you know, it was, it was really hard to find any uh, mental health care at that time. And so we found some older guy and Aiden said that he was, ha he had one session and he was like, yeah, you know, we're just, talking and then he had a second session and I came home and I said how did it go today with uh, therapy and he said uh, oh that guy said that um, I sounded fine he, he was not fine <laughs> and that um, I didn't need to have therapy anymore and he and he fired me I mean that's how he put it now looking back i don't know if that's true or not i told him i'm gonna call i'm gonna call and, and complain about this um and aiden was like no mom don't don't and so you know i i, I don't know if that's true or not okay. you know i just i don't know but i found the uh, the guy's name and aiden's i was able to get into aiden's iCloud and i found that guy's name now i know hipaa um is a real when this kind of situation is happening and you see your at this point Aiden was an adult, you know? Yeah. And um they wouldn't give me any information. Um so this is this is a senior year and um now we're we're into a senior year and he's he's like keeping stuff from me he's sleeping he's staying up he's playing music and stuff and he's spending a lot of time uh recording music but um he's starting to get like angry and um 
you know, he would just take off and leave and I, and he was starting to block me on his phone. And I just wanted to know, you know, where are you? What do you want for dinner? You know, I wouldn't hear from him for a long time. And then I'd say, Hey, then he would call me and, um, I'd say, Aiden, I've been trying to text you and call you. And he would say, Oh, Oh, I, di I didn't see it. Yeah. You know, um, I didn't believe that. Yeah. And, but you know, he was 18. He's, you know, doing his own thing. He, uh, got a new girlfriend. He, uh, she was coming over to the house You know, I saw his girlfriends a lot. They were over here all the time. I'd pick some hot chocolate. I'd we did dinner. They'd uh, go and watch movies in, in his room. They'd go to the ocean. Aiden loved um, Bodega Bay. I, I don't know if people know where Bodega Bay is, but it's uh, the little town just a short distance from the um, beach and the coast is where the okay. birds, uh, Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Uh -huh. from. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and Aiden okay. loved that little town. I mean, we would go out there and we'd stop in. We'd go into the antique store. We'd go into the little grocery store there that had all the Alfred Hitchcock stuff. <laughs> and uh, we'd go up to the church where it was all filmed. And he, he loved kicking around that tiny town. I mean, there's literally like five, six, seven buildings there. Wow. And, um, and we would just kind of, we'd have coffee there and uh, hang out and have a sandwich at the store, a deli sandwich. And then we would go to the coast. But when he got older, he, uh, he was going to the coast a lot. Bodega Bay was like his soul spot, you know, okay. it's where he went. Um, he went there Sounds a cool. lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, there's just, so that whole coast, Bodega Bay is like, there's, it, there's this little highway one that runs pretty close to the coast mm -hmm. and there's all these little beaches. They're all separated. It's not like one big, huge open coast. They're all broken up with rocks and separated. So there's like, there's like, uh, I don't know, it must be about 12, 15 beaches, you know, <laughs> and they're all, they're all different, but he mm -hmm. liked the main one. Uh, he liked the main one. Uh, there, there was this one main beach and it was like the biggest parking lot and everything. And he liked okay. to go there. And so I don't know if people saw my, um, my Facebook page, but on his birthday, I went out there and I, um, I lit a candle and I, I drew hearts and I just stayed there all day on his birthday. Um, <laughs> So, you know, he, I found some pictures in his iCloud of beautiful pictures. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll post them um, that he took of, of uh, Bodega. He, it was a special place. There's fish and chip place out there, you know, by the docks. We used to go have fish and chips there too. Uh, that, that's not the same. So like there's Bodega, the town, and then you, you drive up and then you get on highway one and you, and then there's other stores and stuff there. And Mm -hmm. Then you uh, go around to the docks and there's a fish and chip place. But um, I used, and then we used to go out to um, Stint, Stinson Beach, you know, Stinson Beach. I don't know if people know that beach. That's, that's um, closer to San Francisco. It's like, it's uh, in Marin. It's the Marin coastline. Okay. It's kind of a protected beach. And we would go out there with his friends. I have like lots of pictures of him and his buddies. He had two close friends. You know, he didn't have like a, a big set of friends, but he had a, small knot of really close friends these two guys you know that mm -hmm. he was friends with uh since charter school he met them both at, at that charter school and even though he went to a different uh elementary school after that they all met up in middle school again and it mm -hmm. was like it just kind of uh you know took up where it left off and, and um so uh i i have pictures of him with his friends i'd take them all to Stinson and um and take him and this one friend to Stinson a lot. And Stinson's really magical. I mean, you see whales. Oh, wow. Don't know. Yeah, you see you see pods of dolphins. And you always get the feeling the dolphins are kind of checking us out. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Probably they're, are. They're, yeah. yeah, they're going parallel, but out, out. But it's like they're kind of like, you know, looking at all the people, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I was there with my mom once. We saw, we saw two whales. Two oh, cool. Whales. Yeah, they were out there spouting. But... Um, <laughs> So that was like beach. The beach was like where we went to really decompress, and and uh, I feel I feel like that was how it was for him too. 
okay. you know, and, and uh, kind of get a perspective. You know, the ocean is so big and it just makes, you know, some of your problems seem a little bit smaller and it's so beautiful. And, you know, you see that you live in this beautiful world. And, mm -hmm. and so, um, so, you know, so he wanted to start, you know, so now he, um, he had gone out when he was 18, he went up to Washington where my brother and my nephew, uh, my nephew is not my brother's son. It's, it's my sister in Florida. He, he moved okay. up there near my brother. So okay. uh, af after he got out of the Marines and um, he was in the Marines down in San Diego and, but he was living in Concord here just in the East Bay. And so uh, we would go over there and watch his wrestling matches and, We'd have him over, and Jordan would come spend the weekend with us, and um, and uh, so Aiden was really good buddies with Jordan. He was; okay. they had a good relationship. Okay. And and so when he was eighteen, he went up there and he went camping and and rafting, uh, whitewater rafting on the what is that? The Snake River, the American River. It's a big river. <laughs> up in Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so we're Vancouver and Portland. So oh. They took a, okay. Yeah. Yeah. They took a whitewater rafting. They went camping, and um, so when he so in January of 2022, he said he started talking to Jordan about going up there mm -hmm. to live. And um, I know Aiden was ready to get out of Sonoma. I, I left home and moved out when I was 19, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I did that. Um, my brothers and sisters pretty much did that. We worked and got our first place, got roommates, you know, and started living our life. And so he wanted to do that. And I was happy that it was with family. And um, there was, like, he had gone up there that, when he went up there that summer, he met uh, some of his cousin's friends who were also into producing music and, and recording music. And so he was really excited about that. Um, he liked Vancouver. He, uh, he liked Portland. Um, and so he was ready to move up there. And so I was like, okay, so I, I start buying, like, you need this and you need that. You know, when I moved out on my own, I had like a bed, nothing, you know, nothing. It was, it was pretty bare bones. And, um, but I was like, Oh no, I'm going to set you up, you know? And so I started buying, you know, I started buying him dressers and I, Oh, you need all this bathroom stuff. And Oh, you need all this kitchen stuff and you need towels and you need this and you need uh dishcloths. And so I was just like buying all this stuff and, and um, buying him like, I said, oh, you guys need a, you need a living room lamp. You need a coffee table. And I, I literally bought all that stuff here. Uh, not all new, like from Craigslist. I would, I have a really good eye for yeah. stuff like that. And um, I bought some really cool furniture and we packed it all up. And I, um, I went up there and he, um, so he put all his stuff in storage because uh, my nephew was moving out of one situation and then they were going to move into this apartment together. So okay. everything that Aiden had was going into storage and then they moved in like, it was just like a few weeks, you know? Okay. Yep. And uh, so he had this girlfriend here, uh, he met her and this is when I told him, take a break. You know, you're, you're planning on moving up to Washington. Please just take a break, but no, <laughs> I'm going to have a girlfriend. So um, they were having like a long distance relationship and I don't know what was going on. There was some, problems there and I just got the feeling there was some kind of issue that with between them I, I guess the long distance thing wasn't working out yeah. well um this is when I uh I got a phone call uh, it was like at three one o'clock I think in the morning and I missed it and I I saw it uh this was after he moved in with Jordan it was just like a, a couple weeks and um he said mom I need to talk to you. You know, he was, he was, um, he was upset and he was breathing. His breathing was like, you know, like, you know, like that. Uh -huh. And I, I need to talk to you. So immediately I called him and I said, what's going on? And he said, Oh mom, I think I had a panic attack, you know? And I said, Oh, oh honey, <laughs> you know, I made sure that um, before he left that he, he got a Kaiser travel card. Mm -hmm. So it's like, he can go to a Kaiser up there and i said why don't you go to the kaiser up there and just like check in or something he said okay i will but he was like looking for a job and setting up the house and yeah. he just i don't think he did that 
Yeah. Um, so then, a, like, I, I don't know if it was a few days or maybe five days. Um, I get a call from him. It was like 11 o'clock at night and he was, um, he was terrified. <sighs> he was, he was, um, he was just like shaking. I could feel him shaking through the phone. He, he could barely talk to me. He said he was afraid of Jordan. I'm sorry, afraid of his nephew. And I, and I, I said, Aiden, why, what, what, are, what's going on? And he just said he was afraid. And then he felt like people were, he started getting really concerned with doors. And he said that Jordan had opened the door and looked at him while he was sleeping and then shut the door. And um, at this time, he started getting really concerned about doors. Um, and so I told him, well, if you're scared, you know, this, just uh, leave the house. And so he called me later. You know, he got some stuff and he got out of the house. And I, I told him I put him up in a hotel. And I, so we went to the same hotel that we went to when uh, we first went up there to drop off his stuff. We stayed at this hotel in Vancouver. And and he was saying, Mom, what what is... Uh, you know, what he was talking about, the door, how do, you know, is this door locked? Does it lock? You know, can they unlock, can anybody unlock this from the outside? And I was like, no, Aiden, you, you have to have a key card, you know, it's okay. And and I, um, so then he said, well, I'm going to go stay with my uncle. And I said, okay, okay, fine, you know, go stay with, you know, my brother. And he was there for a few days. And he started saying, he started having the same concerns about, uh, I guess my brother had some tools in there that he needed for his job. And um, he came in to get some and this just really disturbed Aiden. And he was, he was saying, I, I can't stay here. So then he went to stay with one of the friends. I mean, he barely knew this kid. Um, who was producing music and okay. and so he says I'm going to go stay with him so I said call me back so now I'm I'm really concerned um, because Aiden is I said what is going on up there and and you know Aiden had depression problems but he never um, was accusing people of stuff that that wasn't based in reality I I was like what the heck is going on up there yeah. and um, and I, be I believe, you know, I just took him at face value because he had never made um, like accusations that were unfounded or anything like that with people. So he said, I, I'm scared to stay here. And I said, oh my God, Aiden. And so he called this, uh, this kid, this young man, and he said, I'm going to go stay with him. Now, when, when this is when I, I knew something was really wrong. Okay. Uh, this kid called me and he said that he had um, been homeless with his girlfriend and he just got this apartment. He had been to the hospital. He had been through a lot. And he said, I just want to talk to you and make sure, that, you know, what kind of person your son is. I said, oh, Aiden is, you know, he, he's he's great. He's totally trustworthy. You don't have to worry about him um, messing with your stuff or doing anything, you know. And then I think th this young man got alone away from Aiden and he said, to me said he says does your son have mental issues and i said well he's he's been he's had depression he he had a bad breakup with a girlfriend um but you know but that's not what this kid meant that's not what he meant okay i could tell from his voice um that he had some concerns well aiden he couldn't stay there so that i convinced aiden to, you know, I guess the next day, um, Aiden said, I, I don't think I can stay here. You know, he's, he's like in a rent situation where I'm not supposed to be here. And, uh, I think, I think Aaron was picking up and, you know, that there was something really wrong with Aiden because he, he wasn't so close to Aiden. He was more objective. He was on the outside, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, he, also was recently homeless and I think he'd probably been around some people who had mental issues and he was picking up on that that there was something really wrong yeah. and um this is where i really started to get concerned so i i convinced aiden to come home and this was um in march okay. um this was in march of 2022 and so i said aiden you know what he says mom i'm gonna get an apartment and 
he had gotten a tax return and he was blowing through it, which was also concerning. He was really just blowing through it. He only had like uh, $1,500. And I said, Aiden, you're, you don't have a job up there. You're not going to be able to get your own place for that amount of money. They want a deposit. They want all this stuff. I said, cut your losses and, and you know, cut your losses, come home. And, um, and, you know, we'll make another game plan, you know, and you, you can get there out on your own. Just you, you need to come home and regroup right now. Yeah. He goes, okay, mom, I think you're right. Um, I do want to note, like I was, I had him on um, Life360. Does anybody know about that? No, what is that? So that's an app where you can, you can have different groups and you can follow people. Like, so if your family, say like your, your uh, young adult daughter is going on a trip and you want to make sure she's okay, you put her on life 60 and it tracks her on the highway, but it also shows how fast, how fast you're going. It has a crash alert. You know, if you stop hearing from them, it'll show you exactly where their car is, Okay. you know, so, so that if something's wrong, you can call that police station and say, this is where the car is at the corner of this and this. And you're on, can you please go see if she's okay? Or so I had him on that and he was, he was speeding really fast. I mean, just incredibly fast. And I told him, Hey, he didn't know that I could see that. You know? And I was like, uh, Aiden, you need to slow down. What are you doing? You know? Oh my God, mom, you see that? You know? So I kept telling him, Hey, slow down, slow down. So he got home and he was, so happy to be home he he had been so genuine genuinely terrified you know mm-hmm. um and so my brother had helped go get his stuff it, it caused a huge rift in the family you know yeah. um and it was i didn't know what to you know what to do but i was going to i was looking for counseling again of course kaiser was not yet uh made to treat people who were so I, so I was looking through like sliding scale and everything in Sonoma County. Um, at this time, I told him, don't, don't do anything right now. I, I just want you to decompress. I want you to like go play Pokemon Go. He liked to do that. He liked, he, he, he skateboarded quite a bit too. So I said, just go skateboard, you know, go play your music. Just really, Aiden, just decompress, just decompress. Now yeah. all his stuff is still up in Washington he, in storage. Never really made it out. He had uh, put uh, a lot of stuff back in storage. So he wanted to go back up and get it. I I told him, I'm going up to get it. You're not doing, you're not going up there, you know, but he insisted um, on going up there. um, And we went and got all his stuff and came back and he was happy, but he was getting really um, agitated and angry and he started like accusing all of my family members of stuff you know and i'm like something is wrong here you know um so i I was calling people i called the hospital i called kaiser and um aiden was very you know like private at this point he didn't tell me who his doctor was he didn't tell me um what what he was being treated for he was going on doctor's appointments i said where, where why are you going to the doctors what's going on nothing mom it's fine you don't need to worry about it and later i found a receipt from the um pharmacy for 1625 but it um all of the uh, information about what it was for it was you know like the, the prescription the papers they mm-hmm. were gone it was just a, a tab just a little tab a uh, slip from the pharmacy and um, he had some skin issues before, so I thought maybe it was something skin related, you know? Yeah. And um, so I'm looking for a therapist. I'm, I'm working, I'm working two jobs, <laughs> or two jobs for a year. And through all of this, and um, I wish I wish I hadn't, you know, I wish I hadn't worked those two. I wish I had quit that other job earlier just to, just to, but you know, I mean, this, what happened at the end was that he was gone you know, he's moving out on his own. And um, then he was, he was back. So that was the end the third week of March. And then we're going okay. into April. Okay. And then he says, mom, I'm going to get a job um, at Nugget Market. I'm going to start. So he, I said, are you sure, you know, you want to do that? He's like, yeah. So he started, um, he went through all the training, which was a little bit, um, <laughs> the feedback from that from him was, uh, it was unusual was kind of like an army sergeant and they're just kind of 
drilling at these young people for eight hours oh, to geez. kind of like it was a definitely a weeding out process okay <laughs> yeah. um and so when he got done with the training the manager down there said asked aiden so how did you survive it i mean they know yeah. they know that it's it's uh, intense and so um aiden uh so he trained down in nevada and then he came up in, to work at the sonoma one and he, he um he had his one so his one day the only day that he worked there was uh a friday which i i don't know i have to look at my calendar 24th 23rd i think was of april okay and he was off on saturday so um i came home from my saturday job and i um all the lights were off in the house and his his truck was here so i knew he was here so i knocked on his door he was very you know i i could not just i had to knock i had to be i had to call out he was very concerned about doors but he was also really private about that so i knocked on the door and i didn't hear anything and i said aiden aiden are you okay i i, I just said aiden aiden you know hello and he said he said yeah and so i opened the door and he's in bed and it's completely dark and i said how how did work go you know so, you know, I was kind of excited for him. Um, it was actually really good pay. Uh, their benefits and their vac everything was kind of awesome, mm -hmm. you know, and they actually pay you like weekly. It, it's, it's <laughs> it was on paper. It was awesome. So he said, okay. And then he burst into tears and, and I was like, oh my gosh, Aiden, what's wrong? What's wrong? And so, um, you know, he, he had quit the Glen Ellen market job. Uh, I think he was just completely burned out and he went and worked at Dutch Bros, which um, he met a different group of people there. And um, and there, so once again, <laughs> I don't know why, uh, but people were giving him a hard time. Aiden was just, he was a really sweet kid, but people like to just tear him down. I, I, I don't I know, know why. Yeah. I I, 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 I can identify a lot just from you describing them. Uh, people will pick on you if they sense that you're not, you know, that, I don't know. It's just like a pecking order thing. I, I, I grew up with it a lot too, though. So I can kind of identify with that. Yeah. In spite of that, Aiden was constantly um, trying to have a good attitude. He would, he would like try to rebound. He, he was really tenacious with that. He was like, I mean, I know it sounds like he was like depressed, but he would always say, you know what? He was trying to find inspiration in things. He would, he would say to me, you know what, mom, forget people who are like that. I'm, I, you know, I, I want to live life. I want to have, you know, I want to do this and I want to do that. And, I, and I'm just going to stay away from, you know, those negative people. And so at Dutch Bros, there was an incident there too, where um, there was a complaint against Aiden that he had acted inappropriately, but it was anonymous. And it was later found out by the manager that it was an employee making a false accusation. Yeah. And they acknowledged that. And actually I talked to them and they acknowledged that to me, that they found out it was an employee, a female, and she was making a false accusation against Aiden. And she, and she had done it anonymous, anonymously, uh, anonymous, you know, because she didn't want she didn't want her identity to be known. So um, he left there, you know, and uh, when he was at this new job, uh, one of the best friends of that girl or, okay, I, I'm not sure if it was that girl. I, I'm not sure, but one, she was best friends with the girl at Dutch Bros. Mm -hmm. And she, Aiden said, I, he had had some reservations about working at this market because of this person. He had said that to me before he started. And I said, well, you know, how much are you really going to work with her? There's a ton of people there. You know, it's a pretty busy market with lots of employees. And I said, so, you know, I mean, the benefits are so good, you know, um, how much of a problem do you think it'll be? And he's like, yeah, I, yeah, I think, you know, I think the benefits outweigh, you know, that I probably won't see her that much, but when he told me he was crying and sobbing, he said that she, at the, he was a checker and she was begging at the end and, um, you know, right on the floor where all the public is. 
she had said something really inappropriate to him like uh she made some kind of sexual comment to him okay um and it was super embarrassing and um he he just felt like he couldn't get away from these people you know yeah. like they were just gonna um you know bother him and so i when it, she, it was really inappropriate you know what she said um and, and she was also being very suggestive she was making uh hand motions okay right right there at the end of the checkout where all, people are going by produce people are yeah <laughs> really wow. really bad and um so i said okay he goes i don't want to i don't ever want to go back i said you you don't have to and and so he so that was uh he worked his last day friday and so the next day I, I when i came home from work i said he said he was going to resign and i said okay and he said the manager was out at a wedding or something and that he was going to write this letter so first of all i said well we're going to write down this account you know what she did what she said we're going to write that all down yeah. and um and then we're going to write and he wrote his resignation and then he went in that sunday and he resigned and i said what did the guy say and he he said so this assistant manager said uh he told her what happened with this girl and the guy said oh she's leaving next week anyways we don't care you know and, and try to convince him to stay and then said no and so no repercussions for what she did if a guy had done that if a guy had done what what she had done uh he would have been in big trouble yeah. you know it would have been it would have been it's well legally i mean it's yeah. not okay yeah. and um but no she's gonna skate you know and they're gonna let her and so what happened then so that was sunday he went and did that and then um monday was the day so i'm looking i'm calling kaiser um i called a, a hotline um they're trying to direct me to some stuff and then i called um uh, and then I called this uh, this sliding scale place, and that you know I got a list of all these places I could call. So I started calling around, calling around, and I found someone for him. And so this is Monday night, and I came home from work, and I said, Aiden, I found somebody for you. I think it looks like a really good match. Would you please? I'm sitting in a, in my chair, rocking chair, and he's on the couch looking at his phone, and. Um, he said yeah mom I, I said yeah he goes yeah I'll, I'll go into counseling and um right after that he looks at his phone and he gets this like really alarmed look and um he jumps up from the couch and he goes in his bedroom and i said what's going on he goes nothing nothing and then he says mom i'm gonna get out of, I, I just want to get out of town for a few days i'm gonna get out of here i just want to leave town for a few days i'm gonna go stay with a friend or dad and i thought uh dad um you know yeah. you better call him and let him know uh because you guys haven't been talking you know um and what friend just never mind just a friend you know and so he starts packing up some stuff you know just like a duffel bag and and um i i was kind of i was worried about him i jump up and i'm like Aiden you know what's you know what's going on i kept asking him what's going on nothing mom nothing everything's fine it's good we're good everything's good and he's and he starts taking his duffel bag out to the car he goes out to the garage and i see him grab um this uh, one of these uh boxes storage boxes that are black you know with these totes yeah. with a yellow top yeah and yeah. i thought he was like getting bedding you know like a, some blankets and a pillow and um because it didn't seem too heavy he was kind of like flipping it, you know, flipping it around and he took that i i said aiden please call me can you please call me when you know where you're going to be can you please call me and um he also i guess he had i don't know if he had talked to his dad yet or because some of this is hindsight there was a lot that happened when he when i knew something was wrong and um it was just a flurry of just crazy phone calls and 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 i'm <laughs> i am spinning out i i can't do stuff fast enough and i can't get people to call me back fast enough and i can't i can't do things fast enough you can't yeah. when when somebody's missing time is 
time is flying by and you cannot make things happen fast enough. And so it's really overwhelming. And but at some point I found out that he had talked to his dad and said, it, would his dad meet him outside of Sonoma County? You know, uh, meet me. It can be in Sonoma County. Let's meet outside Sonoma County. And um, when I did talk to his dad, he said, yeah, I thought that was weird. And I'm like, you thought it was weird? Well, <laughs> why didn't you uh, call me? I mean, that's something worthy of discussion, you know? I mean, yeah. um, so I w he was going out the door and I was like, Aiden, don't do anything risky. Please don't do anything risky. And I just had this feeling like he was, I said, don't sleep in your car. He'd, he'd never actually done that before, but I just had this weird feeling like he was kind of like on the run. And I just said, don't, don't sleep in your car. Call me when you get to your friends. Just let me know that you're okay. So later he did call me and he said he was out at Bodega Bay. And um, it was pretty quiet for being out at Bodega Bay, but I thought maybe he was in his truck. And I said, oh, I was kind of relieved. You know, I thought, oh, Bodega Bay, that's his sole place. I mean, he's just kind of calming down. And then um, he said he would call me later and then he blocked me and he wouldn't answer my calls. I kept trying to call him throughout the night. And uh, I, I think uh, this went on until about 10 o'clock the next morning, texting him, texting him. Um, and he um, finally picks up the phone and, and he says, uh, mom, you're, um, I, you know, I've been, I wasn't able to get a hold of you. I said, what are you talking about? I've been calling you, texting you. I took some screenshots of all the texts and sent them to him. And he goes, oh, I just didn't see it or something. And and uh, I said, Aiden, where are you? I could hear him driving. And he said, uh, 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 I'm not going to tell you. And I said, Aiden, are you north or south of the Golden Gate? And he goes, I'm south. And I, I said, no, you're not. No, you're not. Where are you? I'm not going to tell you, mom. And the next day, so then he called me that night again. He um, he said, I'm okay. He was at a hotel. I could tell he was at a hotel. I could hear the TV, you know, kind of echo and stuff. And I asked him again, where are you? He said, he said I'm not going to tell you, Mom. And um, I, think, I think it was this day. I don't I think it was the next day he called me and said, Mom, I, I'm going to go stay with um, Grandma Debbie and um, and Mike out in Utah. They have a trailer. He, he was all excited. Then all of a sudden, I, you know, we talked and I said, oh, God, Aiden, just please be careful. But but so now I know he's on 80. I know he's on 80. That's the only way to get out there. Mm -hmm. And and I said, uh, you know, OK, Aiden, um, where are you at exactly right now? He still wouldn't tell me. Um, he, but he was super excited. Yeah, they got a brand new trailer, like a, a um, campy trailer. And they're going to, you know, they're going to let me, it's uh, in their backyard. It's surrounded by a fence. It's locked. I'm going to stay there. I'm going to get a job. I'll just get a barista job somewhere. And, you know, I said, oh, God, Aiden, okay. So then I'm getting calls from the grandmother, uh, from the dad. Everybody's talking. Okay, so Aiden's, Aiden's on his way. That's good. That's great, you know. Mm -hmm. And so he, he called me a few times on his way out there, and um, he was excited. And everybody was excited. Grandma Debbie was excited. She was going to get to spend time with Aiden. Um, Mike was excited. They made plans to meet at a speedway in is this Sugar Hill area of so Wendover? He, yeah. No, no, in Utah. Oh, no, in Salt Lake, Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. Like okay. Sugar Hill area. Okay. And so Aiden, I, I didn't know why they were meeting because Aiden had uh, he knew how to use, you know, um, you know, navigation on you know any of those apps, Waze, whatever. Yeah. And I, I didn't know why they were meeting, um, but so Mike said he was him and his friend were uh, were going to go meet him at this gas station, and he was going to follow them up to Roy, because they didn't live actually in Salt Lake City; they live up in Roy. Okay. So um, it's like about five o'clock. It's like it's right around five or five fifteen, and Aiden calls me and he says, "Mom." How how does the trailer lock? How does the trailer lock? Does it lock like the front door? And I said, um, yeah, yeah, Aiden, you can lock it from the inside and they won't be able to get in. And he's like, mom, I don't know. I don't know. And I said, oh my God, Aiden, please, please just go there. Please just go there. And if you don't like it, 
you can come back home, please just go to your grandparents, please meet them. Don't, don't start doing this. You know, and he was getting um, defensive with me. What do you mean, mom? I'm, you know, you don't, you know, you're not like, uh, you know, he, he thought that I was uh, saying he was crazy and all this stuff that I was, I was really concerned about what he was, his frame of mind. And I, I'm begging him to just go there. So then he's blocking me again. <laughs> I asked him to please take a picture of the salt flats. He says, I'm not going to do that because I don't know. I don't know why he wouldn't do that. So, um, the, uh, so I don't remember exactly what happened at this point. Oh yeah. He's blocked me. And then, uh, Debbie calls me, grandma Debbie calls me and says, Oh my God. Um, uh, Aiden has tried to kidnap Mike. And I'm like, what? And she says, yeah, he tried to kidnap Mike. He tried to grab Mike's uh, phone and tried to take him to Washington or something. And I was like, what? Oh my God. Call the police. I knew Aiden was, I, I, I knew he was, he needed help. He needed help. Yeah. And so I said, call the police, call the police. And she's like, I don't know where they're at. And Mike only had like, she goes, Mike doesn't have any, he called me and it cut off because he, um, his phone ran out of battery. And so I'm like, Oh my God. So I call Salt Lake City police and I tell them what's going on. And I, and I said, I don't know what you call it in Salt in Utah, but we call it a fifth. Uh, uh, 50, uh, 5150 in California and my son is having a mental break please go help him please find him and he's like well where was he and of course I don't know so I'm calling Debbie back and I'm like where where did he meet Mike and she's like I don't know and I'm like oh my god then you have to get a hold of Mike or Terry uh, I'm sorry <laughs> his friend and say uh, and find out where they were uh, uh, so that they can look for him and um, and she, she couldn't get back to me for a while and later I found out where they were. So I called the police. I made a report. Uh, he was missing. And then, um, so I had, um, I had Dayton's, um, his, we, we switched, we had the same, um, um, bank, you know, uh, regular credit union. And yeah. we, we had it so that we could switch money back and forth. And so I could see what he was spending when he was spending, um, when he was using his card and, um, he had uh stayed you know how like it comes delayed you know like they the charges come in delayed yeah then i saw that he had stayed at a motel six in reno okay and he had also gone to he had gone to walmart and he had gone to another store which i can't remember right now but i called these stores and i gave them the um a, the uh, uh transaction number this was later you know, because I, I wanted to know what he bought. He actually bought black hair dye. He bought shampoo and uh, some toiletries, but he bought. So I was saying to this guy, what is this one item that, um, he, you know, the guy told me it said BLK something. And I said, is that hair dye? And the guy said, oh, yeah, I think that's hair dye. So he bought black hair dye and he, he did dye his hair like he had dyed his hair black before um it didn't really take too well because it's got nice strong healthy <laughs> hair it didn't really take yeah. and um but um so i was like okay why you know he's buying black hair dye mm, that's, that's not good and uh and so now i don't hear anything i'm trying to call him i can't reach him oh wait 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 this was the night so he blocked me for a while mm -hmm. and then he called me around seven i think and he i could hear like um it was like a it was a gas station you know yeah. i could hear all these cars coming in and out and i asked him where was he he wouldn't tell me i said aiden what are you doing i said i said where are you at right now and he wouldn't tell me and then i heard a trucker horn and i said you're at you're at a truck stop that that was a semi and he, he goes he just wouldn't answer me and um he goes mom i'm gonna i'm he started sounding really exhausted because he had driven uh from reno mm -hmm. all the way to salt lake city oh, wow. and then he was on his way back and he wouldn't tell me where he was and um he says I, i'm just gonna get a room i'm so tired and i could hear this exhaustion in his voice i'm just gonna get a room mom i said okay Aiden, that's that's really good please just you know stop somewhere um, and, and get a room, be, be safe, please be safe. 
if you know I, um, you're on the road by yourself, please be safe. He's like, I am, Mom, I am. I said, please call me when you get into the hotel room. You know, he was blocking me and unblocking me like at will. So he, he calls me um, and I don't know where he's at. And I saw on his, um, his bank thing that he had bought a coffee at, it was east of Salt Lake. And so at this point, I'm terrified because he could be going to Michigan. He could be going to Florida. He could be going anywhere in the mid to eastern United States. He okay. is now the last hit that I had on his bank account at that point was that he was um, east of Salt Lake. But I, I guess later I found out that that is where he dropped Mike off at. Oh, and and um, so I don't know where to look, you know, and uh, so he tells me. So now he's in his room and he's exhausted. You know, I hear it in his voice and um, he says, Mom, can you read to me? Um, because I'm really tired, but I can't sleep. And then he starts asking me about the doors again. He's in a room that has a suite, attached suite room. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what is this door in my room? And I said, um, that's just a suite door, like families, so the kids can see in one. It locks on both sides. Just make sure it's locked. Yeah. And he goes, oh. so he went over and I could hear him unlocking and locking that door. I said, they can't get in, Aiden. Okay, if your side of the door is locked, you're safe. And he's like, okay, mom. So he's laying down, I think, and he's like, can you please read something to me? Um, so I, I'm looking for something. All of, all of his stuff is gone and boxed up, and he wanted me to find this one book. So I, I'm just, he goes, I just need to hear your voice, Mom. I just want to hear your voice and try to go to sleep. So I start reading something to him, and and I can hear the exhaustion. He goes, oh, Mom, I'm so tired. I'm, you know, I said, okay, just you know, call me or text me. Cause so now he's texting me a little bit too. He's texting me. And, um, for some reason he sent, he called me again after this. And it's okay. like, you know, it's getting late. This is like 1130. It's still midnight. I'm just sitting here awake. Just, I want to hear from him. You know, I'm just, I, um, I'm, I'm calling people, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so, um, he so it was pretty late and he, he um he said mom did you get this text that i sent you just now and i looked and it was telegram and i've never seen that app before and he says mom will you go on telegram will you join that and i said oh, why do we need to do that and he said just just do it mom and so i said okay so i said i'll he goes, call me back when you did it. So I went, tried to do the app, but he had an iPhone and mine was a Samsung. And I was like, I can't do it. And I didn't know if it was just like this iPhone thing, like something he had. I, I, really, I am not tech. I am I'm very bad. At, and let me just tell people out there who have young people, you need to learn all of this stuff because you need to familiarize yourself with all these apps and um and what's going on out there watch some tiktok if you don't i know i can understand i never watched TikTok <laughs> before yeah. this um i i i knew he had an instagram page and i i would go there just watch him but nobody else i mean i i was very you know just i was working a lot too you know i was working a lot yeah. so um i i called him back and i said aiden i can't this is for apple and he goes oh never mind it's fine mom never mind and then he wanted me to read him something again and so i found this book he had wanted me to to find and so i started reading it to him and he's like oh it was really weird it was about this guy like kind of like a gangster thing you know and mm -hmm. uh, and i said he goes oh i don't remember this this way i don't want just that's okay mom i don't want to hear that and i said okay yeah um Maybe you're thinking of a different book. And he goes, I'm going to go to bed now. I'm really tired. I said, okay, Aiden, please call me in the morning. So this is a, like, this is after, just, just after one, I think. So it's actually the 27th. Okay. Yeah. This is Wednesday now. Okay. So Tuesday, he had driven all the way across California into Utah. And, that, and he, I didn't know it at the time, but he was on his way back. I didn't know it. 
So the wow. next morning I wake up. So I, I fall asleep on the couch and I wake up like about, well, it was before it was like four o'clock in the morning and I immediately go and, and um, I know I can't call him because he's so tired. He used to yell at me if I woke him up too early. And so I, I look online and I see that he has bought gas in Wendover and I'm like, Oh my God. So I, I, and it said it was, it posted at like eight, it posted that day or something. So I immediately called this Chevron station and I'm like, Oh my God, my, my son was there and, and he bought gas. And, um, and so then I start calling, well, I, I hadn't heard from Aiden yet at this point. I know that he was in Wendover. And so I'm like, he's on 80, he's on 80. Mm -hmm. And so I, so now it's like five o'clock and I'm waiting to talk to him. And I, you know, right around five, I had this weird feeling like I should try to call. I really was suppressing this urge to call him at five. A.M., right? Sorry, yeah. A.M., okay. Yeah, A.M. I had this strong feeling at like five o'clock, like right around five that I wanted to call him. And I thought oh, I had just repressed that urge to do that because I thought, my God, he's sleeping. We, we just got, you know, he's only had at most four hours sleep. Mm -hmm. um, don't call him. Just wait and um and and then try to get a hold of him so um it was about eight o'clock i think i started calling him and he, he didn't call me back and i thought well maybe he's still sleeping and um i just kept calling him and i was texting him and calling him and um he wasn't answering me again and and I just had this feeling something was really wrong. I mean, he was blocking me before, but this time I, so then I saw that Wendover thing and, and then I, you know, I, that's when I, um, I decided to call the police. Then I was like, he's not answering me. He's out there alone. He's at this hotel. I don't know where, you know, and, um, but he was in Wendover and I thought he might be in Wendover. Um, so I immediately call Wendover, West Wendover what's there's a I called Elko County Sheriff's mm -hmm. I called all of them and I don't know what the county is on the uh, Wendover side it's like Tule. it's Tule yeah Tule I called Tule Sheriff's they were uh, uh, they went all over this I said check the casinos check all the hotels check everything he was at this one Chevron and um they found it we found out it was last night it was it was the night before that he on was the at the back. Chevron okay so um so uh, I kept calling this guy and saying this this uh, this clerk at the Chevron station. I'm like, I need. Do you have uh, any camera footage? Do you you know we need to we need to camera footage? And um, he was like, Oh, you have to call the casino. I'm calling the casino. They're like, You have to call the security. I'm calling the security. I'm like, Well, please have security call me. And now at this time, I have all these police departments calling me, and I'm calling. I'm on the phone with them, and I can see on my phone a call coming through, and it's restricted. Because that's when law enforcement calls you, it's all restricted. So I'm on the phone with one law enforcement and I see, and I, I'm so torn because I want to, I don't know if they have information for me or yeah. what, but I'm on the line with somebody else and I'm on the, I'm at the computer. I'm right here at the computer. I have the phone and, and it's like all these calls coming and, and stuff. And now my, my voicemail is full and I can't even check my voice <laughs> and it was it was just a, it was a nightmare it was like in that dream where you're in this long hallway and you can't run fast enough you know and yeah. but just imagine that dream and your child's at the end of that hallway <laughs> like they're gonna fall you know or get hurt and you can't get to them fast enough it was it I'm was so, so sorry. awful i'm so sorry amy that you had to go I'm, through this i'm sorry but it was it was um it was really awful and as you can see, I have like I have like PTSD. I can't I can't really talk about it without um, getting really upset. But um, so so um, we're looking everywhere and we can't find him. And I, for some reason, because Wendover was by alternate ninety three, and I was checking down there. At, you know, I still at this point I thought he was in Wendover that he had left the hotel in Wendover. So um, he had said something to me um, the night before. He had said when in one of our conversations, he said, "Mom, what about San Diego? What about San Diego?" And I said, "Because he he likes the beach. I mean, he he has a real need to be by the beach, the ocean." 
doesn't matter if it's you know warm or cold or whatever it's got to be the ocean you know yeah. and i said well it's pretty expensive there Aiden. <laughs> you know why don't you just come home and the whole time i'm telling him please come home and he had said uh on one time on the road like i feel like everybody's kicking me out of snow and i said honey i'm not kicking you out of snow please come home please come home and he just he just refused yeah. to so uh now uh so then i called the uh the the nhp i thought you know he could be anywhere in the state of nevada i don't know so i called the nhp in the afternoon and they told me um one of the things i want to say is that uh, law enforcement is really uh resistant to um uh, you know <laughs> I know that they will be upset for me saying this, but they, they don't want to take, they will resist taking a missing persons report. Um, the Sonoma County Sheriff's, uh, I reported it here first um, when he, when he said on the 26th uh, that he, he wouldn't tell me where he was. Um, I reported him missing from Sonoma County and the guy said, Oh, are you sure you want to make a report? And I said, yes, yes. I want to make a report. So um, when I was on the line um, on the 27th with Sonoma County or Elko County, they were like, um, they said uh, they were looking for him. Everybody was looking for him. They had a bolo out for him. And, um, but they said, well, check back with uh, Sonoma County. And when I called them on the 27th, called them back, this guy, <laughs> This guy, I, I got into a yelling match with him. I had some, I had a friend over and some, you know, who was there with me during this phone call. He, uh, he told me, I said, he's endangered. He's endangered. And the guy's telling me, he doesn't meet the criteria. And I'm, I, and I was yelling at him. I'm, I'm yelling. I'm like, you're telling me that someone with Alzheimer's is endangered. Someone with, uh, maybe they're, um, uh, autistic, they're endangered, or mentally handicapped, they're endangered, but my son who's having a mental break is not endangered. And this guy's like, no. And I said, I wanna, I wanna speak to your uh, superior. And he said, I am the superior. I said, I wanna speak to your superior. And he said, he's gonna say the same thing. He does not meet the criteria. And he's yelling this at me like an army sergeant. He does not meet the criteria. And I remember the last thing I said to him was, my son is gonna, you're not helping my son is going to die and i hung up and the next morning i got a call from elko county and they said we found your son's truck on 93 and um i immediately called my my dear friend who's been a, she's like a sister to me i've you know you know we were tight you know from like 20 i hung up uh, we were roommates and and you know i called her and she immediately i said well, i gotta go to elko and so um we she said okay just give me a minute and, and she got in the car and she said she was going to drive and we just drove straight to elko right then and we got there around uh, i don't know it's like 4 30 or 5 p.m and uh the under sheriff and uh the lieutenant came out and talked to me and her and we asked her where a hotel was and um got a ho hotel and we wanted to go out there and they're like we got search and rescue out there we don't want anybody we didn't really understand at that point what kind of terrain this is this is really how much time do we have on this <laughs> Yo, as much time as you want it, it's we don't have a time limit you're good you're fine okay so yeah. what i want to get into now is about the actual search and rescue i've been out there many times i went out there with the ruby mountain rebels twice um uh my, me and my friend we, we tried to drive down 90 we drove down 93 um we found the staging area that the the, the sheriff there's a, a bunch of wagons they had atvs or horses and stuff we could see their trailers and, and their cars parked there because you could see curry in the distance that's so right, right when, as soon as you can see curry um that little town you see because there's nothing for miles no buildings nothing and then you see this little outcropping of buildings off to the left and that is where it's at it was at mile marker 23 and there's uh people have speculated about what is across the street from there um, Aiden stopped there. It's a weather station. Okay. So it's, uh, I think it's the NDOT weather station. Yeah. And um, there's a little turnaround there. And so Aiden had stopped there. And uh, I don't, for whatever reason, they took his vehicle right away. They, um, um, I don't know why they did that. I wish they would have left it there so that he could come back and, and leave. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. you know, um, but I guess they, they took it right away. And, um, I mean, 
but they they pulled out all the stops. They went in there with dogs and drones and uh, Idaho Search and Rescue and White Pine County and um, Fish and Game and BLM officers. And uh, uh, Sheriff Iator went out there later on, on horseback. And um, so they, they uh, first they started tracking him right from the truck, you know, and you could see the footprints. This is uh, May 28th and um, they can see the footprints leaving. When they had a three man uh, fugitive tracking team that night that tracked him over the Palomino Ridge, which is this ridge that's fairly close to 93. And then when you go on the other side of it, it's the bench. I guess that's what they call the bench, you know, flat area. Yeah. And then uh, it kind of goes up. So this is the very north end of the Cherry Creek Range, the very north end of it. And I think if you pull that down a little bit so you can see further north. Okay. So there, see that kidney bean shape? See that, like, go to the, yeah, that kidney bean shape, that light area off to right. the left. Oh. Off to the left. Okay, this right here, or sorry. No, nope, the okay. big one up in the okay. corner. Sorry. Pull that center. Pull that center. That is called the burn. So twenty years ago, that area burned down, and you can see that there hasn't been much that's grown back. There's ranchers in there. There's a couple of ranchers who do a lot. You can see there's roads in there. This road is coming in from the north, and there's another road right, right where your arrow is. That road is pretty. Uh, <laughs> that north road at the very top is really rough. I mean, you have to have, you have to have four wheel drives. You have to have four wheel drive to get back here. It's, 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 it's huge, but I just thank God that he wasn't lost in the middle of the range. I mean, this is the very north end of this range. And we, and so he had come in a Cottonwood Canyon, which is a little bit south of where you are right now. You, you're kind of north, but if you go south of that burn, you'll see this big Canyon leading in. And there it is, there it is. And so that is how we went in with the um, lieutenant. We went in, that's called Cottonwood Canyon. And it, if you keep going uh, uh, west with there, right there is a triangle you have. So there's a triangle there, it's a flat area. And um, so they, that's where they were set up and they found eight footprints right, right about on the other side of the road. Well, down uh, just a little bit further back, they found his footsteps coming down off that hill. In, in their shales there. Yeah, right okay. there. And they found his footprints. Um, they found him further back too, but they had been tracking. They jumped ahead to this area because they could see he was headed in this one general direction, south, okay. southwest. And at this point, he went uh, across the uh, triangle and they found his footsteps in um, some of the trees there. Um, a little bit more farther north where that blue dot is that's the triangle okay. i know there's a lot of a lot of triangles but yeah. <laughs> yeah. so um he he was up in the, in the area directly right of the triangle or left i'm sorry left of the triangle left of the triangle um this is where the second range of mountains are and these are big these go vertical the the first range is kind of like a gradual it just kind of keeps going up and then it drops down into this narrow uh valley here where the triangle is but um when you go west that the mountains go they they are you know kind of rolling for a little bit and then they go straight up well he was in these, this tree area they said he went around a tree a few times like he was walking around this tree and then he went straight up you see it you know, the mountains on the left there he started going straight up those mountains and Yep, right there. And they found him on the side of the, his last tracks were going up. Now there was still snow at the, at the top of these mountains. And one of these, um, one of these patches of snow looked like an arrowhead, like, a, like it was pointing. Mm. And Aiden was like attributing, uh, significance to very mundane things. Like he came out of his bedroom before he left, the day before he left. And he said, Look, mom, I found a moth on my bed. And I'm like, yeah, we often get moths, <laughs> you know, if you leave the light on, open the door. Yeah. And, and I just said, oh, oh, yeah. And he goes, yeah, you know what that means? And I said, no, no, what do you mean? And he goes, it means transformation. That means transformation. I'm lucky. Yeah, this is a good sign. And I said, okay, you know, and, you know, I was looking for counselors and stuff. But I just knew that he was trying to cope. And, um, yeah. So they thought he was headed towards this arrow, assigning it some kind of significance. And so he went up all the way, um, 
like three quarters of the way up the side of this mountain through lots of sagebrush, very densely packed sagebrush. The reason I know is that I was up at, I was on the side of that mountain. Yeah. And um, they lost his tracks. You know, how they lost his tracks was that that's where the snow started, right? So now his tracks are in the snow and then the snow melts and the tracks are gone. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> But they didn't, you know, they didn't do this all in one day. They they found the tracks and then they they have to pack it up at night and get out of there before it gets dark and all leave too. And then when they went back, snow had melted and tracks were gone. When I went when I went back with Ruby Mountain Rebels, we went up. They gave me that. I got the uh, coordinates of those last tracks from Elko County, and I as soon as I got to them, my phone went off. My Verizon phone, both me and Aiden and I both had Verizon. He had his own phone at this point, which was maddening. You know, he had, when he was up in Washington, he got his own phone, mm. his own phone account. I could no longer see what was going on or anything. And, um, but we both had Verizon. And as soon as I got to that spot, we were headed towards his last known tracks. My phone went off. All my alerts started going off. And I feel like Aiden, um, I think he climbed up there to see if he could get a signal. Yeah. And, and the thing that struck me when I got up to the top there is I turned around and I looked north and I could see the highway. Now, when I first went into this area, I got turned around a lot. I mean, I knew kind of north and south, but um, you go if, you, know, you go up and down these hills and pretty soon you're if it's noon. <laughs> You don't know where the heck you are, you know? Yeah. And um, so we were there with the lieutenant. He was kind of taking us around, and it was cold. But the night, Aiden had a jacket, a North Face jacket that was good to 30 degrees. And he had a hoodie, and I think he had a watch cap on. He had many watch caps. And and so um, I know he wore shirts under his hoodie, so he had a shirt on. So um, he, I, I felt like he could have stayed you know, he would have been okay that night. Um, when I when I went up with the Ruby Mountain Rebels in July, I think was the first time, um, these guys climbed up this mountain. My phone went off. This guy had climbed straight to the top of the mountain, and he yelled down. He said he found something, and they found a dead down spot, like something had been under the tree and moved all the rocks and everything out of the way. Mm. And it was like a kidney bean shape, like somebody on their side. And... Um, uh, we, uh, you know, they took pictures and stuff like that. Um, I went out with the Ruby Mountain Rebels again, and this time we went southwest. We went up to 10,000 feet, and right around 5 o'clock, the wind was blowing so much that you couldn't hear somebody um, 15 yards away from you. I mean, it was the wind was just going so hard. And I remember we stopped along some of these box canyons and went down the side a little bit, and I and the wind was blowing extremely hard as it was the night that Aiden, um, you know, that they were looking, that he uh, disappeared. The wind was, it was very windy that night. It was like um, 40 degree or 40 mile an hour winds. Okay. Yeah, really, really hard. And um, so these winds were really uh, hard. We're up at 10,000 feet. We can hear stallions winning around the corner somewhere. We saw them later um, and but um, I went down the side of this hill and I, there was just a small clump of trees and I went under it and there was no wind. It was completely sheltered from the wind on the side of that hill. And I was like, it dawned on me. I was like, oh my gosh, this, he would have been okay. There would have been no wind because where they found this bed down was like three pine trees mm -hmm. and he had been under one of them. And I thought, oh yeah, he would have been okay. Mm -hmm. He would have been, and and the reason why I think he continued up the uh, side of this mountain was um, I tried to to go down uh, the side of the mountain to get down to the jeep, and the sagebrush was so thick that I started to get tired. You know, you're lifting your legs up and trying to step down, step down, step down uh -huh. in between and over these things, and I started to trip. <laughs> over the over the sagebrush and so i think it actually would have been easier to go up at this time the last time his phone was pinged at this location it was like 8 p.m it was dark you're not going to go down where it's he was at this point almost above the sagebrush line so he would have gone up 
because it was so scary going down that sagebrush in broad daylight. It was so densely packed. Yeah. So some of the things. Uh, so what I really want to talk about now is um, the searching. So yep. I know there's people who want, I, I, we'd love to have some help searching. We have the, the dates locked down. I know this is a terrible date to start it on, but it's Mother's Day weekend. And it, we are going to be there all the way through the 21st. So okay. we're going to have that that Saturday, that Sunday. I don't know how many people, but we do have a search and rescue, a private search and rescue. Uh, we also have another search and rescue that's probably coming in and, and maybe possibly another guy with dogs. I, I've been very busy uh, trying to call these people in, but we're going to be there the week. So anybody can come in at any point during this time and do some searching or they can do the searching, you know, at another time. It doesn't have to be at that time, but there's a lot of people, uh, search and rescue teams, um, they're, they're not connected to Elko County and they want to come in and, and help me from the, you know, uh, goodness of their heart. And, um, and, uh, one, one of the ladies who has, uh, uh, she's been uh, like helping me with her search and rescue. They droned the area west of the burn. Um, they didn't find anything. They take all these images, you know, it takes like a ton of Im images and they've sorted through that. And I actually have new information for them, um, areas that they can hone in on. Oh, okay. um, yeah, we've, we've kind of got it now narrowed down because when me and my sister, uh, we went out there in September Okay. and, um, I don't know why we went in North. We didn't go into the Cottonwood Canyon. Okay. Um, we went in north, and because, you know, the last place that we saw him was, uh, that the, he was seen was on the side of the hill, and I thought, he's going to go towards, I, remember I saw the highway north, and mm -hmm. I said, there's the highway. I think he would have headed for the highway. You know, I think he went back there, he was scared, and and um, I'll tell you why I think he was scared. Um, there were some witnesses that saw him on the 27th, the morning of the 27th. Uh, there's a lot of confusion about footage. The only footage of Aiden was at that uh, Wendover Chevron. Okay. Um, when I talked to Motel 6, they have cameras, but it wasn't working that day. It wasn't working that day. There's no footage of him at, at the Motel 6 in Wells. No footage of him that day at Wells Motel 6. Okay. Um, so there's somebody out there saying, oh, he didn't say, I have the receipt. I, I've got, I've recovered his truck and all his belongings and I have the Motel 6 receipt. He was there the night of the 27th. I have the check-in time. I have the full receipt. Okay. Um, so then um, some lost time. Uh, also, there was some confusion about um, where he got money. At the time that I saw him pull money out of an ATM, I had no idea where Carson, Nevada was. Okay. I, I didn't know where that was. I thought it was coming back from... You know, because they, they come in dated later, you know? Yeah. And so I thought it was between Salt Lake City and Wendover. Okay. Um, I found out later it was Carson. He had pulled out $100, and then he had pulled out another $100. Mm -hmm. uh, you know? Okay. So, um, so anyways, that's that takes care of that. I know people are wondering about that. Okay. So he actually was using money, um, I don't know, to buy food and stuff between, you know, on the way to Salt Lake City with that money. I don't know. Okay. So, um, I thought he was headed north. So we went into the burn and as soon as we got to the burn, so we drive in north and it, it was, uh, somebody, somebody, uh, helped us drive in with a four by four. And, uh, we got, we got into, as soon as we hit the burn, me and my sister headed west. We turned to our right and we started heading up into the hills. And I didn't get more than 20 minutes. So she went straight up to this, up this ridge and she headed north towards where his tracks were seen. I went in too, but I kind of started circling around in the lower areas. So you see where the, let's see, where's the burn the again? Burn. Yeah. yeah, keep going north. Keep going there. north. Up. That's the burn. Yeah. Right here, yeah, this area. That, yeah, so right at the top of the burn, we go into that that vegetation area, and there's a ridge you see this ridge up here to the uh, to the right. My sister, um, oh. we were at the very top of the burn, very top of the burn. Okay. And I start going into that brush, and she goes right up to the straight up to the ridge, and she starts looking. And so as I turn west, I kind of turn a little bit north, and and lo and behold, I see sneaker tracks that are sunk and dried into the mud. 
So these are when the earth was wet. Yep. It was almost like, you know, they were dried in the kiln. And yeah. <laughs> set down into the dirt or it was sinking into the mud. And these were tennis shoe tracks that matched the shape and size of Aiden's tennis shoes. Okay. And what some of them were going up towards the ridge. I was, this was a little bit south of where my sister was. But then I um, I saw they were headed north. They were headed north and down. And in fact, he's, this, the tracks were right next to this tree. And it must have been so muddy because they sunk like three or four inches out. Like, you know, like when you sink the mud and then you have to pull your foot out. Yep. You actually leave this, um, you know, suck some of the mud up. Yeah. And there was a set of those next to this pine tree headed um, north. Okay. Uh, and so I followed those. I, I was following them. And one of the things that I did, I had the um, the um, mind to turn around and see if I was leaving any tracks. The ground was baked hard at this point. It was completely baked hard. I, I did not leave a twig. I mean, you could not tell that I had been walking through any of that. There were no tracks. So these tracks were definitely made when, when the earth was wet and moist and it was muddy and just like right now, probably. Yeah. And um, I followed them to um, some brush. So then there was a patch of trees and all this vegetation. And um, that's where I lost the tracks. But they were headed north. They okay. were headed north. So okay. they're headed north along this burn. Okay. And it's west. So north, kind of on the west side of the burn, but on, the, on that tree line right there. So, yeah. So what you see, um, so the road going down the middle mm -hmm. right to the left of that is that's all sagebrush and stuff yeah and then there's the tree line so i went through that sagebrush and then i started i headed into the trees my sister kept going west and she went up that ridge right there she got almost to the top and okay. she also found tracks she also found tracks now if you go north a little bit where i was i also found guess what i found tracks in there found boot tracks uh following horse tracks and the boot tracks, you, you can tell because the the toe and the boot, the heel are separated. Uh -huh. You know, there's a hard line there. Yeah. And it was also at the same time. These are horse and I don't know if it was law enforcement, who it was on the horses, somebody out looking, a rancher. I don't know. Okay. But it was they were definitely made at the same period of time because they were sunk into the ground, just like the other ones, baked into the ground, and they were headed up the ridge. Okay. So, um, um, so then it was starting to get dark, and we had to get out of there, and my sister came down, and we were on the walkie-talkies, and we're like, I found tracks, and I'm like, I found tracks too, and, you know, um, we were really excited about that, um, and we were encouraged that they were headed north mm -hmm. um now I, i'll talk a little bit about what it needs to be done when we do a search we're looking for anybody who wants to help and somebody i said experienced outdoors people this is somebody said what does that mean i mean somebody who's you know used to hunting and has a good um idea of direction you know you got a good directional sense uh you're aware of your surroundings you know you're, you take the time to see where you came in from and, you know, you, you just don't want to go running into this area. But, um, you know, we made teams last time, so we paired people up. We have nine walkie-talkies and um, we, have a, we have a spot, we have spot devices, both me and my sister. And so we were pairing people up like, okay, so this people searching down here, there's a spot device down there. And they all have walkie-talkies, and we were all relaying and checking in with each other the whole time. And um, and then I was further up in this other area, and I had a spot device, and we were checking walkie-talkies. And one of the, there was a local guy. Um, um, I'll just say B. I'll just I won't say his name, but yeah. I, B. He was amazing. He was amazing. And what, something you have to remember is that in Nevada, Nevada is at high altitude, really high altitude. And uh, me and my sister were huffing and puffing. These guys were running around there like mountain goats. I mean, they were just like up and down the hills, and they don't have the same problem that me and my sister. I, I uh, found out that Sonoma is at 17 feet above sea level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 17 feet above sea level, and then and the, and at the um, the valley in the top of the Cherry Creek Range is about 55. It's like 5,400 feet. 
And uh, so that's the difference for us. But you know, they're all you guys are all there at fifty five hundred feet. You're like at five thousand feet. Yeah, we're used that. to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, you know, I you know um, that's so what we do is we all gas up and we get a clipboard and we get everybody's name, phone number. We get an emergency contact, and uh, the board has numbered. Uh, with uh, one through nine to start, or and uh, we assign everybody a, a walkie-talkie or a group, a walkie-talkie, you know, and, and we don't want anybody going out by themselves and venturing off on their own. They need to be in a group of at least two, three and four, and all stay in contact uh, and line of sight with each other the whole okay. time. Yeah. And because um, one time I, also when I was headed down the sagebrush and I got tired, um, I was in, I could see, the, some of the rebels, the Mount, Ruby Mountain rebels up at the top, and I decided to follow a cow track, which I thought would switch back, and it didn't, and I lost sight, and let me tell you, this, something about the desert just swallows up. They start calling my name. I can hear them, and I'm yelling, and they can't hear me um, because of the vegetation. It just soaks it all in, and I can actually see this guy's tennis shoes up the mountain, and I'm yelling at him. He still can't hear me. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, so, it's crazy. Um, the acoustics really mess with you. Yeah. Yeah, the acoustics are not favorable. So yeah. you want to stay in line of sight all the time. So, you know, what we need is like anybody, there's a, I think we're going to have help with a, a, side, a couple side by sides. Um, somebody's got an all terrain vehicle. One of those searchers said, don't worry if anybody gets stuck up. My, my vehicle's going to be able to pull them out. Because I was, cons I'm concerned about the the mud. This has been a hard winter in Utah, yeah. and Nevada, in that area, right? Oh yeah, it's been it's been really bad. So it's been yeah, it's, we've we've gotten stuck a few times. Um, so yeah, definitely um, four four uh, four wheel drive is definitely important. And um, yeah, if anybody is going to be coming out, we're going to be uh, coming out. Um, uh, you know, whenever you guys are out there, um, I think it was that like the beginning of May or was it the end of April? So so we we were wanting to come out in May, but because I think we're worried about, we want to give it a little bit more time. That's why I haven't updated Aiden's page yet. I actually just got confirmation that and and locked that date down just like about forty five minutes before we started this. Oh wow! And okay. Yeah. So because um, I had to check with the search and rescue uh, to see if he could if he could do that, and and we wanted to give it a little bit more time so that um, maybe. If it's wet out there, it dry, can dry out a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, Mother Day's weekend is not ideal, but you know, if your mom's abroad, anybody who can come out, we appreciate it. And um, but so anybody who has four wheel drive, if you don't have four wheel drive and you still want to come help search, don't you know, call us. I mean, each vehicle can carry several people. So um, I, I had somebody from Southern Idaho who said they wanted to come out with their side by side. I was like, heck yeah, you on out and so what we do is we meet at the gas station everybody has to gas up and top their tanks off so a lot of people bring in extra tanks of gas you know five gallon tanks of gas mm -hmm. um then we fill out the, the emergency contact the sheets the phone numbers um and we do ask some pe uh, people to um at least uh, see if they can get the onyx hunt um if they have a seven day um you know, what is it, trial. Trial, yeah. And so why this is so important is that you can turn on tracking and then you can turn off, uh, turn on, um, what is it called? Offline maps. Okay. So, so what it does is it locks your location when you turn offline maps on. And it doesn't matter if you're, um, if you're out of cell service, it's not working on that. Now it's working on this locked map that it's, that it's locked down and it's following you through that. It's okay. own. And so what happens is if you turn on tracking where there's cell service at the gas station and then turn on offline maps, it will track your location. And if you get lost, you can see your tracks and just backtrack on your way out. Okay. That's why that is so important. Also, you know, um, taking pictures is really, if anybody sees anything, you know, they have not found um, not a sock, not a shoe, not a wrapper, nothing. Not a water bottle, not a, not a, just, yeah. not, a, not like a wrapper from anything, just absolutely nothing. Um, okay. I know that Aiden had access to water, at least um, when we were in there. Um, you didn't have to go too far up this one ledge and there was like shelf of snow. 
you know, like, yeah. Oh yeah. And even though that's not great, that can cause hypothermia. It was definitely there, Something, you know? Yeah. And, um, so that that's at least water. But, um, so we all go in, then we, we get everybody loaded up at the gas station, uh, with all organized. Um, this time I think what we're going to do, it's going to be a little bit more targeted. Um, we're going to have areas, grids to search. There's definitely the area. It would be, me and my sister wanted to get dirt bikes um, because that area north of the burn, right in between those two roads going out, mm -hmm. that area, we, we've gone in there on foot and that is, that would be uh, amazing. Easily, um, uh, uh, you could get through there with a, with dirt bikes really quick, you know, but you have yeah. to stop and glass. I mean, we have, we got a really nice pair of binoculars. Uh, somebody from the Ruby Mountain Rebels had a scope. I really want to get a scope because... <laughs> The difference between binoculars and scopes is this. We're at 10,000 feet and I'm glassing and I see uh, a cave and I said, there's something in the doorway of that cave. And um, <laughs> the, the people, you know, the one who had the scope, we put it on there and, oh, that's a bush. Yeah, yeah. In front of a rock. Because the, the shadows play tricks on you, you know, yeah. and... If you don't have a scope, is so much better. I mean, it just comes in. You can see things really clear with a scope, and I really want to get one. Um, but you have to stop and look and stuff. But it's also a big area. But um, dirt bikes, it's it's not really like vertical, super vertical. Um, in that area between those two roads, there's up and down. The trees are kind of open. You know, I mean, okay. like there's yeah. no heavy. Where yeah. you couldn't get through, the trees are kind of spaced apart and uh, easily traversed by uh, traversed by um, my, um, dirt bikes, you know. Yeah. And so that's uh, you know, if anybody has a mind to do that, that would be awesome. Um, but we've had we've had families come out with us the last time um, with their kids, you know, and they're driving around just looking. They're uh, you know, they would drive up into areas and, and the mom would stay in the, with the kid <laughs> yeah. and the guy would get out and, and take a look around, you know, go into the tree line, check that. So um, I want to just say really quick um, how amazing <laughs> the Nevada people have been. They've been just amazing. And, and then a lot of the people in Elka have been um, just so nice. I mean, I, I, I can't believe some of the people who've come out and help us look. It's just, we're, we're not from here. We're not locals. We're from out of state. Every time we come out here, it's, it's uh, you know, it's really costly. And and uh, we didn't know anybody from anything. And I just want to say that, um, you know, some people have helped us out with rates on stuff, you know, when we were staying out here, Eastern Nevada Rentals down in um, Ely. Yeah, we got a, we had a side by side. Uh, I just want to shout out. If I can do a shout yeah, out here. Of course. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Office Max in Elko. Love you guys. Um, <laughs> Shutters Hotel. Shutters Hotel. I love everybody there. They are the nicest people. Everybody from everybody, everybody, housekeeping, front desk, the manager, everybody is just so helpful and we're really there for us. I, I love them to death. Um, I, I you know, we go back, it's just like, uh, I mean, they were really there for us. Um, uh, Hampton Hotels and Wells, Joe's Auto Repair, my car broke down. Aiden's truck broke down. You know, there was several. Joe, Joe's Auto Repair was awesome. Um, Grease Monkey, on, you know, they were awesome. <laughs> and uh, uh, Lostro Towing, um, they towed Aiden's truck because they have, um, that. that's, uh, I don't think people realize, but there's a special, um, I don't know if it's certification or or just process, but when you um, when you tow a truck for police in a case like this, it's like it costs seven hundred dollars. Yeah, and yeah. it's and it and it has to be by a towing company that follows protocol. I think it's some kind of it's, it's a special kind of of tow job. You know, it, it, they have to follow protocol. I think. And, uh, but I also had to use them when, when something went wrong with Aiden's truck and I towed it to um, Grease Monkey and they and these girls were amazing. We were talking about, um, there was a sighting up in Spring, um, was that Spring Hill? Spring Hills, just north of Elko. Um, Spring Creek. Um, Spring Creek. I am yeah. sorry. No, you're good. Sorry. Spring Creek. And, um, and so there was a couple of sightings and there was also, we, I, I went out at night one time. My mom was really scared for me. I was creeping around the Mavericks where, um, right there, uh, 
the highway 80 and what's the road that uh, mountain city Parkway. mountain city parkway yeah yeah and i was at the up there in the mavericks and the mcdonald's and i was creeping around <laughs> looking for anybody and i was talking to the homeless guys there and saying did you see this kid and somebody said yeah i saw this kid on a skateboard and at the at the time i wasn't home i i, I know how many skateboards aiden has and i couldn't go check you know and i was like oh my god so i'm running around there at night and um my mom was like please get back to the hotel <laughs> uh and, and i ran into this kid i showed him his picture he said um i haven't seen him at the skate park he was also a skateboarder he was on a skateboard mm -hmm. and i stopped him and he was like you should be careful and get out of here that's what he told me and i and i learned a lot like there's um there's this one close to shutters. There's a there's a outdoor mall, and there's like these big storm drainage things that go under the highway. And they were telling me that that the homeless there's one where all of these storm drains meet, and there's this huge wide opening, and a lot of the homeless go under there. So that same trip when I was with my mom, I was really hooking into the homeless community in Elko at that point. I actually went out to Tent City and talk to the lady who lives across from there. She has a 12 foot hurricane fence and three very vicious uh, German shepherds, but she she came to the gate and I showed her and she says, and I asked her, should I go into Tent City? She's like, nah, I don't, I don't think you should. <laughs> and um, so I stayed away, but um, we, so when I was at this uh, mall, uh, this outdoor mall, not far from Shutters, um, I went and looked is that it was opening to the side of this mall and um i looked down there and i could see uh an electronic device light on down there uh, yeah. Light. okay yeah there was a, there was an electronic somebody had a device on down there okay. like a like a phone light i could see it in in the uh down in the tunnel so um yeah there's you know but i was checking all all that out and i and you know what I find really strange is that there's there's a real um, resistance and um, people are very reticent to get involved in missing persons. Um, I had another call by somebody, um, and I actually we were we were um, DMing each other at about two thirty in the morning, and finally I just called her, and she she picked up at three o'clock in the morning, and she told me she also thought she saw. The description of the kid that the first witness saw in spring creek um and, and she thought she saw him at the roundabout spring creek you know going out towards lamoyle okay. and uh, there's a roundabout there and um i said well please call the police then call elko and she she didn't want to and i'm like why and she goes well i don't know if it was him and it's like that doesn't really matter <laughs> yeah. doesn't matter if you are 100 percent or not just call it in nobody it, nothing is bad is going to happen to you um uh, if you say you need to be anonymous you'll be anonymous but you know you'll be heralded if you uh help find a, a missing person especially somebody who is um in the frame of mind that aiden is somebody who can't you know who's endangered in my i you know they're endangered yeah. and um there was but the one person who he was really nice he um he told us everything he actually said on Facebook, this was all through Facebook, um, Sonoma connections through Tahoe, through Incline Village, to um, to Elko area in, in Spring Creek. And my friends, I have a couple of really good savvy Facebook friends who were working the, the vines and getting information. And they found this person who said, um, oh my God, I think I saw this kid at the grocery store at Curry's in, in Spring Creek. And, um, so I contacted, so it was like we had to go through this chain. I didn't know exactly who this person was, but I was in contact with the, <laughs> it was hard to explain. I was on somebody else's message thing. And then I, I messaged them, DM them and said, you know, I, I need to get in contact with that person. I'm, I'm, a, I'm Aiden's mother. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's how I was able to um, talk to that person on the phone, the witness and and he described i mean if this description would would have been aiden he said he looked filthy like he had been um like he hadn't bathed or showered he was just like covered in dirt 
Um, he said he looked really uh, like scared, like his eyes were really big, uh, like he, but he also was like avoidant, so, you know, like he was not wanting to people to bother him. Yeah. And um, this guy was just like really friendly. He was just um, kind of walking along, kind of, you know, how sometimes you get close to somebody in the grocery store and you go, oh, excuse me, you know, or something. Yeah. He got he got in kind of that space with um, this person, and he he's really tall, so he said this person looked up at him. And um, was just kind of like, you know, scared and kind of then trying to avoid him. And um, he said he was wearing a black jacket mm. and a hoodie, which is what Aiden was wearing. And I asked him, do you know what color shoes he had? Because Aiden actually has several pairs of shoes missing and I didn't recover the other shoes. He has a pair. He always likes Nike Air Force Ones, you know, Nike, okay. Nike. Um, High tops. He had a pair of white Nikes. They were low, low tops with red swoosh. And then um, he had um, a pair of white. They're white, black, and like a dusky purple. Um, that's the color scheme of that. Mm -hmm. um, but we think he had his black Nike high tops on. Okay. And um, he's not. He's not wilderness savvy, but you know when we were up there the second time with the Ruby Mountain Rebels, two of the people from that group walked straight up that mountain and down the other side to um, Butte Valley Road. They were in pretty poor shape. They walked 17 miles, all in all, 17 miles. They were in pretty, they got, yeah. they, they, um, they parted with this other group and um, they wanted to go all the way over and go down the other side. The, the other side, the west side of that back mountain range, you know, where they're really tall, um, mm -hmm. that, that was a, an area of interest. People were flying drones over there quite a bit. Okay. And thinking that Aiden, because they found that bed, you know, bed down and that he was headed up, that he would have come down the other side, mm -hmm. um, which was like rolling foothills. They're like rolling foothills. Um, but nothing but nothing has been found no footsteps the only footsteps uh to date the you know the latest ones are the ones going north okay. that me and my sister found so you know there's there's a lot of that area that we want to continue searching and um you know now there's no footsteps all yeah. the footsteps are gone so um they're bringing in you know cadaver dogs um of course you know i want to find aiden but I, you know, I'd much rather find him alive, and and so for me, I feel like I want to keep his face and his, his his story out there because he could be somewhere. It's it's still yep. possible. It's still possible that he got out of there if he bedded down for the night and rested, which these two guys didn't do. He could have. He knew where the where the highway was at this yeah. point. He, you can see it. If he saw it at night, it would have been lit up like a Christmas tree with the, with the headlights. It would have been like a Christmas tree. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, I am not losing hope that he may have gotten out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a story about a kid um, in Lake County. It's the county, the next county north of Sonoma County. Mm -hmm. He, um, I, I don't know. This happened about 10 or 12 years ago. He was, maybe it was sooner than that. He was an adult. He had autism. Uh, one day he grabbed his cat, walked out the door. I think he had, it was an argument with his mom over his phone, you know? Yeah. And um, he grabbed his cat, walked out the door in Lake County, just 45 minutes north of here. And uh, three years later in Utah, there was an officer, it's on YouTube, and I'll try and find it, but. Um, he, these officers were really concerned. This guy was outside of a grocery store. He was about, um, he was about 23 and um, he looked, it was very cold out and they noticed he had a, he had a shopping cart and they drove by again the next night and he didn't have a shop, shopping cart. It was even colder. So they stopped and talked to him and they said, do you want to sit inside the, the, the cruiser for in the front seat and just warm up, you know, the heater and stuff. And what happened to your cart? They're talking to him. They have their body cam on. They're getting images of him. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't know what made them do that, but I'd, I'd like to call up that jurisdiction and find out because they call, uh, sent the images back to dispatch. And the dispatch, um, I've been asking jurisdictions a lot about their methods and stuff. And sh this 
particular jurisdiction had binders, pictures of missing persons. And sh they started going through the images of this body cam through images of missing persons wow. and, uh, of that age group and his description. And they found him. Wow. And they called the mother and stepfather and they um, showed them the body cam and they confirmed it was him. This was three years later in Utah. Wow. From just north of Sonoma County. And there have been some stories like that. I know that overwhelmingly these are not um, positive, you know, outcomes. But um, there were tracks headed north. Yeah. Yep. He rested. There was a source of water. There was a source of water. It wasn't bottled water, but there was a form of water there. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, if these two guys walk 17 miles straight up and over and onto the other side of a mountain, Aiden could see. Um, so this, he could see where he needed to go. And also, um, the last guy that went out with dogs was following the tree line. Uh, along that mountain he got he got a scent track and he was going along the top of that tree line so it would have been um easy much easier than walking down in, into all that packed a tightly packed sagebrush and just yeah. walk along the tree line and then drop down the ridge where me and my sister were yeah you yeah. just followed that tree line so, so yeah. Did did Aiden have his phone on him by chance, or he, okay? So here, well, I want to clear up something about what he has. He had his keys and his phone, and they found his guitar. He was trying to take his guitar. Uh, uh, he was trying to take his guitar, but it was literally like twenty um, yards from the truck on the other side of the BLM land fence, in a group of trees. Okay. And um, I guess he decided to leave that night. Uh, so we didn't have keys. I had to find the extra set of keys, which I found out in the garage where he had put a bunch of stuff. I, I looked all over the house, couldn't find it. So then I went out to the garage and started going through the boxes and I found the extra set of keys. People are like, why couldn't she turn over the keys? You know, and all this, you know, people like to speculate crazy stuff. It's, I just couldn't find them. And I'm a little bit of a pack rat and so is Aiden. And so I had to dig through everything in the garage until I found them. I didn't even know if they were there. I, I didn't know if Aiden had them, got rid of them. I, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know if he'd lost them, what happened to him, but I did find him. And then I, um, I drove back to Elko and I handed them to the lady at the El Elko uh, counter. And I'm like, don't lose these, you know, don't lose these. So um, I do want to say that um, there was a book, there was a book at um, that they, um, at the scene of his truck. It was this book. Nice. It's called the mastery of life. Okay. Yeah. It was on the ground, and I have to tell you, I've ne I never saw that book. This is not the same book. This is not the same book. Um, so they saw this book, and Elko County asked me, "Did you?" Um, so it must it was body cam, I think, that they saw this book, and they asked me, "Do I know about this book?" And I said, "No, I, I've never heard of it. I got this off of Amazon, okay. um, but it was gone. It was gone when they. Um, so it was on body cam from the NHP." Mm -hmm. And then when Elko was called out the next day, it was gone. So there's a little bit of a mystery there. Um, I mean, I, I, it was windy, but I don't think it would have blown a book away. Yeah. You know, I don't think it would have blown a book away. But um, all of his belongings were in the truck, his, his uh, duffel bags. The one thing that wasn't, and that is still a mystery, was this, um, was this tote. Uh, my guess is this. When I was young and moving, um, I didn't secure things down in the back of my truck and they blew off. And uh, I know that Aiden was driving pretty fast. And I, like I said, that didn't seem to be very heavy. He might have had some. Yeah. Yeah, I think it just flew right out of the back of the truck. Because yeah. I asked Mike, Mike, when he got to Salt Lake City, I, I roasted Mike about, I said, hey, did you see this this tub? You know, did you see this thing? And he goes, no, no, I didn't see it. It wasn't, there was nothing in the back of the truck. And it was big enough. He would have noticed it. In the, in the in the truck it's only a cab and a half you know you would have noticed it it was a pretty big tote yeah um the other thing that was really mystifying to me was um mike said there was an ipad in in there that aiden was using and so i knew he wasn't telling the truth about navigation because he had the ipad set up um right in front of the, the shifter and i said no no he just got a new iphone iphone pro 13 um it was the blue version 
And I said, no, no, that must have been his phone. And he was like, because I have never seen an iPad here. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen that iPad. There was one I had, but I, I didn't. I, I think that was put away. It was put away and it was like in a box somewhere. And um, I said, no, that, that can't be right. Um, I, I don't think it was an iPad. Um, sure enough, they found an iPad, very old iPad charger. Um, uh, I found it in the back of his truck, the charger. There, I, I checked out the serial number on this charger, mm -hmm. and it is an old iPad charger. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. I, he that's a that's a secret for me i i didn't know he would was in possession of it was using it it's not my charger i i, I don't know it's it doesn't fit um my um my ipad so i don't know what's going on um so i don't know i'd have to find the old you know the, the ipad and see if it fits if it's still here but yeah that's a mystery i i don't know what's going on with the ipad um so it's so it wasn't in the truck it wasn't in the truck. Mike said he saw an iPad and it wasn't in the truck. So what he has with him is could be an iPad, the Pro 13 and his, his keys. Um, his, his, um, his, uh, survive, I, I, I gave him a uh, Swiss army knife he, that was in the truck with his stuff. He had a hatchet in the truck that was in the truck. He, he just didn't have anything else. Have and, they tried to, um, have they tried to, I know this is kind of sounds really dumb, but have they tried to like uh, FaceTime him or anything like that? Like, I have, I have, yeah. and nothing. I've tried to call him. Yeah. It goes straight to voicemail. Um, I do think there's a preservation on his phone records. There's a, there's a preservation on his phone records. And um, uh, we were able to get, what did we get through that? We were able to get... Um, the pings through Verizon, um, you know, that they, they, and so the way that that, so with the, the ping, when they said the side of the mountain, it's actually from a tower in Wells. It's like this big giant pizza slice. So it could have been anywhere in there. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but we haven't been able to find out like who called, who, who that was, um, that called him right before he left i had friends of his reach out to me people from the original market that he worked at here in glen ellen he went and talked to the manager there he was really tight with her and she said that before he went up to washington he was kind of going around and saying goodbye to people and he told her that um they had changed his medication this was news to me i never heard that he was on that he was talking about antidepressants okay. and i didn't i didn't know anything about that but in hindsight i remember in the kitchen one time because every time I talked to him about getting on antidepressants, he would just say, Mom, I'm not taking any pills. I'm not getting on, you know, antidepressants and don't don't talk to me about it again. And and so I remember um was making dinner one time, like in after he had gotten home from Washington, and I said, Aiden, I really wish you would get on antidepressants. And he said nothing. You know, this was in hindsight. He looked at me and then just walked out of the kitchen. He didn't argue with me. So, you know, I was also, I found um, a psychiatrist, a Kaiser psychiatrist card in his wallet. Okay. They only prescribe medicine. Okay. So he um, texted some people while he was on 80, I found out. Um, and he, one of his really good friends here, um, he couldn't, that he worked with at the store. Uh, she was not able to reach him. She was getting alarmed and then she heard I think the reason he didn't contact her is that they were really close and I think she would have tried to convince him, you know, he was on the run. He didn't want to hear yeah. somebody really cared about him to try and talk him out of something, you know, Yeah. but he called these other people and, and talked to them and I've been in contact with them. Um, I haven't heard from some of his friends, which is, you know, um, I guess disconcerting. I can say I, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I also noticed that people like noticed he was acting strange. And this, um, so when he said he was at Bodega Bay, he was actually down the block from me. He was literally like two blocks away at his cousin's house. He's not really close with. And 
sister and her mother and they said he was acting really strange and it's like well why wouldn't you try to call um they're, so they're from his grandmother's side the one in utah why wouldn't you call her and say there's something wrong with him you know he's acting really strange i mean i think if i i remember when aiden's friends used to come over here i would um make sure they were fed watered i always try to take care of them take really good care of them there was a fight one time in aiden's uh, birthday party and i you know i sat down and had to talk with everybody and so it's not acceptable behavior okay but not making them feel like they're bad people i'm like yeah you know I, you know i was saying like hey i understand you get upset and angry but you can't hit somebody over the head with a remote um, <laughs> yeah there's better ways guys <laughs> yeah. yeah so you know you know and i'd say you know you know do you need you know do you want to what do you want to do you want to take you know just take a break just take a break for a minute have here have something to eat and drink you know and everything's okay come on and uh you know it happens we, we lose our cool sometimes you just have to have somebody kind of rein you in for a second you know yeah so so you know but i i wish that i just noticed that a lot of people there were a lot of warning signs you know and and they didn't really just kind of they just kind of shrugged it off you know, um, yeah. and didn't didn't contact me, didn't call me. Um, I, I just want to say this. I, I have to get this in really quickly. Um, because I wasn't able to uh, get any information from Kaiser because of HIPAA. If you're if you have young adults and they're going to college or they're still on your insurance, um, you have to fill out paperwork to become a representative so that if something happens, you can you can you would have legal rights to their doctor their medical records and stuff like that um there's uh i don't know if you guys know there's like um missing in america uh, people that run these websites one of these people said i made myself a representative on my daughter's insurance plan she she i think she pays for it you know it's on her insurance but mm -hmm. she made herself a legal representative so that she could get in case something happened she was able to access her, her medical information and she said she did that because of me and and there's more reasons than just you know uh mental problems to to do that um i talked to a lot of people i talked to one one uh person this young lady who said that um her boyfriend had gotten into an accident and was in a coma um um and her and her her boyfriend's dad looked for him at hospitals for three weeks it took three weeks for this for this hospital i mean they showed him pictures you go to the emergency room that's where you go you go to the emergency room uh and even if there's mental problems they all come through the emergency room um uh they 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 won't tell you and he was in one of the and it took three weeks he was in a coma wow. okay so if you don't they have a legal representative for your adult child and actually me and my sister are going to make each other legal representatives in case something happens to either one of us um because um i, I find the dark side of HIPAA is that it's a cya for hospitals if, if your loved ones don't know and especially these young people who do not know what doctors should be doing you know they just kind of like okay okay is that okay they're just very accepting yeah. of whatever the medical is thrown at them and um there should be somebody who's at your side just you know pick a trusted person um who, who you know will fight for you and um that way you there's another person who knows what's going on what the doctors and the medical staff are doing or not doing and and they can um fight for for your well-being because um a lot of times the healthcare industry is overshadowed by uh the accounting side of things yeah and not in your best interest i hate to say that but that's that is the truth and that is really that's the truth these days so I, I i recommend anybody with children that's the caveat here get be a medical representative your children need a medical representative um and in case something happens to them i mean it could be a car wreck you know anytime they're driving get life 360 okay okay and um and any time that your college kids are traveling you don't know they can go off a ravine there's been many cases of stuff like that happening you can find them immediately and there's also a crash detection on that on that app so i recommend that people get that and whether you know I, i'm gonna keep looking for aiden i'm never gonna stop but i'm also not gonna stop trying to to change what's going on in the missing persons um, realm. It's not, it's not good.
there's reticence. I've called a lot of, um, uh, you know, I, the, the um, politicians, um, you know, I've been calling uh, lots of people about trying to get help and people do not want to get involved. There's yeah. something disturbing about that to me. I don't know what it is, but um, I would like to see, uh, you know, um, uh, Governor DeSantis in Florida just passed that. Uh, he has a purple alert and it's it's for specifically for mental health because it has become such a problem since the pandemic. And I would like to see that nationwide. I would like to see it first in California. Governor Newsom has done a lot uh, about the mental health issue. I mean, look at our streets in America. Part of the problem is that there are, I'm not saying that they're all, you know, mental health people. A lot of people are being economically pushed out onto the streets. So there's a drug problem. Um, and how, you know, there's a huge drug problem. But there is also, um, I remember when Ronald Reagan, um, he, um, he, he stopped the federal funding for um, mental institutions. There was a Napa Mental State Hospital. Uh, immediately, um, I have my own experience with a, a mentally ill woman who came into my workplace and fixated on me and she followed me home. One night my door knocks and um, she pushes her way into my house, my little apartment, and she pushes me up because she's telling me that she's gonna, she wants to be a teacher. I need to help her get a job as a teacher. And she's like this close to my face. And um, so what I thought to do, she had me like backed up against the wall and she kept coming into my work and doing that too. I don't know how she found my house. I, I do not know. But I said, hey, I'm going into town, into the grocery, I have to go to the grocery store. Do you want to ride back? And she was like, yeah. And I said, okay, great, let's go. <laughs> so we left and I dropped her off at the square and get, I never saw her again, you know. <laughs> I never saw her again, but I noticed uh -huh. that Pataluma, California, Santa Rosa, Sonoma, huge i mean they were just handing people bus tickets and just and they're and suddenly they're all over the place and yes that's a huge problem right now um aiden's generation is the smallest uh generation that we've had uh since they can they can think of this is the first time in history that this generation is smaller than the last generation they're called mm -hmm. zoomies i think somebody was talking about this online and they are having mental health issues. So yeah. I, when I say that we need to make some changes in, in concerning mental health and missing persons, we need to do it immediately. We, we have a po population of young people that are having epidemic mental health problems, not just with, with these young people, but with everybody in the, in the United States, but pointedly more so in that, in that age group. And so we need to make, uh, we need to change some more laws. We need to have a purple alert all over. Um, I would like to see more federal and state funding and I would like to hear from you about your nonprofit. What What is it that your nonprofit does? What we do is we uh, go out and we look for missing people and right now we're our main focus is Dillon just because of where we're located. We're kind of in the mm -hmm. Montello area so mm -hmm. we've been out here searching for him. Um, I know he went missing like a month or so after your son did mm -hmm. and um, May 28. yeah Mm -hmm. And so um, we've been out here looking for him and that's been our main focus is Dylan and also Susan Powell could also possibly be out in these mountains over here too. So um, mm -hmm. there's another uh, kid named Tommy Novak. Um, he went missing when he was 12. Um, oh. Yeah, it's there's there's a few missing people out here in our area that we're trying to focus on. And what we're trying to do is hopefully, you know, get resources together and make it so we can go out and go looking for Aiden and, and make that something that we can go do more regularly. Um, but just as of right now, that's what our main focus is finding, finding Dylan. And um, that's, I mean, that's really what we're trying to do right now. Cause that's where we can, you know, we're able to search, but um, as we can, you know, get out to other places. Um, that's what we'd like to do is go, you know, go searching for Aiden and whoever else we can. Um, right now we've raised up enough money to uh, get a cadaver dog. So we're, we're working with um, Highland Canine, um, which is a training facility out in North Carolina. And um, we're, we're going to be buying a cadaver dog and training with them. And then we'll be able to take a cadaver dog out on searches with us. 365. Yeah. Like all year round, we can, we can go searching with a cadaver dog. So um, that's our plan is to, is to just keep on searching for these missing people and mm -hmm. keep on trying to bring awareness to their cases and just not let them be forgotten about. Because like you said, 
with that um with that person that was found in utah three years later it's just like you never know you until you you get more evidence until you, there's something else that we can go on you just you can't lose hope so that's what we yeah. don't want to yeah so do you do you do um rope climbing or something like that or yeah you know, i stuff like that yeah i um i kind of go into mines and stuff that people uh, maybe not want to go into or caves and mm -hmm. stuff like that and squeeze into some tight places that uh, a skinny guy like me can get into. So mm -hmm. that's what I do is just kind of um, go to places maybe that are dark and creepy that people maybe don't want to go check out, but mm -hmm. need, still need to be checked. So that's where we kind of uh, kind of have our niche, I guess, is we'll kind of go into those uh, places and stuff like that mm -hmm. and go looking. Um, but, but yeah, as of right now, uh, our just our main goal is to just find these missing people and to just yeah. try to try to bring closure to these families is is basically what our our goal is and there's only two of us it's just my it's husband and lance my and me kimber it's just us two really well and our two kids it's us four who go out and wow. search for these people so we're not as big as we're going to be one day we're getting mm -hmm. there but that's for and we we do the best we can for what we are so <laughs> i think that um you know like groups like yours and you have a skill set and you and you have the desire and you're doing it on a regular basis and you um do this um where you go into the mines and was that is there another group that does that too or is it just you guys is there another group out there that goes into mines but um also um like you know adventures with a purpose they had you know, you know the whole thing kind of something happened there uh, and fell apart, but I, I hope that the um, the remaining members of Adventures with a Purpose continue to work, find a way to do that, because I really believe that um, there should be federal and state funding to some of these groups, whether they're professional, uh, nonprofit, that giving them some funding to do this, because when, you, when you're talking about um, law enforcement and law enforcement is great, they're able to bring everybody together and stuff, but they are just, they're not experts at everything. You know, yeah. and they can't, they have rules as being part of the uh, uh, jurisdiction, uh, labor rules. You know, they have to pack it up at five. They have to stop. Adventures of Purpose, when they found, uh, was it Kylie up near Tahoe, they, they just went all, they can go, they can stay as long as they want. They can go in when they want. They can stay as long as they want. They're not bound by those rules and those protocols and stuff like that. Um, and I think that there should be more funding for, um, you know, and I, for these kind of groups and then they also can if they you know can get funding they can become better train you know more training more you know and become experts at this kind of stuff because law enforcement is underfunded they're i'm sorry but they're under under trained in these areas um you know they, they're just under they just don't have the um time and money to be experts in this they are, are doing law enforcement stuff you know, they have, they're doing that. And of course they need to assist when things are criminal and stuff, but I really wish that um, there would be more uh, federal and state funding for these private groups that can go in and, and do stuff that law enforcement can't do. Um, so, you know, I, I'm very interested in making some changes and in, in missing person cases and, and how they're handled. And I, I definitely in hindsight see some big problems some big problems yeah. yeah 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 i think yeah i that's i'm that's such such an awesome thing that you're doing that you're able to take this this thing that's ha this you know really sad you know tragedy that's happened and you're able to to help other people with it i think that's i think that's really cool and mm -hmm. i don't know i just think that's inspiring that's you know that it's, it's inspiring to people out there that even with even when these horrible things happen to you that you can still rise above it and you can still use that to to try to help others and, and you know to try to maybe um help with maybe the trauma that you've experienced with that you know i don't i, I feel like it it, it it does help um i don't know i've just just by doing this you know i feel like it does help you know i don't know yeah some of the one of the things i did i brought up some domain names called missing 101 okay and, and what I want to do with that is not focus so much on um, like in-depth anything with cases, but instead uh, tell people and have a clearinghouse of um, resources for people and what you should do 
um, I would suggest, um, you know, you can call in a missing persons report. It's better to get in their face and get right into that, into that uh, department and show up at the desk and watch what they fill out because um, there's been uh, some misinformation filled out on the form. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, misinformation on the NCIC. People don't know about uh, some of this stuff. Um, there's a, so when there, I, I really need to talk about this really quick. There's a law that was, um, that, that was made in 1989. It's called Suzanne's Law. And what that does is when a missing persons report for anybody 21 and under, and this started because somebody, this young girl, Suzanne, she disappeared on her campus, literally yards from her, um, her dorm. She got off the bus and somebody saw her and she was headed towards her dorm and she just disappeared. And um, so since 1989, um, Suzanne's Law has been in play. And when uh, uh, somebody and under Suzanne's law or children, they have to go into the NCIC that there's a dedicated person at each police department at each jurisdiction who is certified at entering. They have a dedicated machine. It, it goes into the NCIC National Crime Information Center, mm -hmm. and um, it has to be uploaded in two hours. And um, um, it also goes up on the DOJ. But when it's when it's 21 and under, they are actually considered to be children. They don't got an amber alert, but it is to be treated like as if they were children. You should be very alarmed. And I don't think that all um, law enforcement officers are aware of this or it's um, not really highlighted in their training. Um, 21 and under is that that should be cause for alarm. When you hear that coming over dispatch, you should act accordingly and immediately sound the alarm. Um, that, and that's a federal law. Um, and then uh, Newsom, he um, passed a bunch of laws here, you know, the SB 221 that uh, health health insurance companies have to, they have to give you treatment within 10 days. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so they have uh, AB 1394, which is um, when you're in an acute care 24 hour facility or an emergency room, they have to give um, children, I think it's 12 or older, a mental health check check in they check in with you mental health so that's that's another good thing because because they found in a study that um um young people who have gone under a, an acute psychiatric episode or suicide have um 30 percent of them have been to the doctor within a week 60 percent of them have been to a doctor or an emergency room within a month that's why it's so important. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm just. If they can I've catch these of, things early, it can save maybe, you know, mm -hmm. a, something tragic from happening, you know? Yeah. 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 So I, I appreciate your time and everything. I mean, I, I'm, we're just looking. So again, we're going to be out there from um, uh, Mother's Day, the you know, May 14th until the 21st. And, okay. uh, you know, obviously, you know, thinking people may be able to help us on the weekend more on that Sunday or that Saturday, we're going to have search, search, many search and rescues out there. We have, we have, we'll have snacks, water, um, you know, uh, to keep people going and, and we'll be in constant contact. We actually are going to have a command center where we're checking in with people on the hour to make sure that everybody's counted for. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. That's and so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll match people up, um, with experienced outdoors people and, and, uh, and you know we we got to find him, and uh, and um, we have some new areas of interest that we'd like to really like to take a look at. It would be great if anybody could come out and help us. Yeah, and it, so anybody, if you guys, um, you guys listening, um, if you can share this, um, get this out on social media, and spread this around, because um, the you know word of mouth, getting it out there to people, um, that's going to be the main thing that we can get people out there searching and get people. You know, knowing mm -hmm. about the case and knowing about this is just by sharing it. So, um, okay. you guys doing that, um, all that really helps us out because we can't. You know, we, we would just be here talking to ourselves if it was just us. So, you know, okay. it's it's everybody that makes making this possible. So, you know, just thank you guys for sharing this and getting this out there and spreading the word. You know, calling up friends and family if you know anybody in the area that would be interested in coming out and helping or anything like that. You know, it it all just helps. So the worst they can say is no. You know, so. Um, okay it's yeah it's it's going to be a really awesome push i think this spring and i'm i'm really getting excited for uh mm -hmm. you know for that you know may coming up here i'm i just i can't wait I, so 
Yeah, I mean, I've had other situations who tell me that there are a lot of cold cases being renewed, and that if this is this May is a huge busy time for search and rescues because of that. They said that I, I just heard from a search and rescue I'm working with that there's that they're opening up all these old cases, like you were saying. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. A lot, so, of, a lot of help needed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So thank you um, so much for taking the time out of your day to spend with us and, and tell us a little bit more about Aiden. And um, yeah, it's just been, yeah, it's, I was it, just been you telling him, telling us about him. It's just, I can identify so much with him. It's just, it's just, um, we just really, we really want to, you know, get out there and we're going to get out there with you and, and, and find them. So yeah, so just, okay. thanks. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for spending your part of your day with us. So <laughs> no problem. Thank you. It's been a long stretch, but thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, does, does anybody uh, have any anything else that they wanted to add? Just real quick before Amy leaves, uh, give you guys a chance to ask her any questions. Sorry, I've been I haven't been looking at chat too much. <laughs> um, um, let's see where where are the people supposed to meet for the search in May? Well. We we have met at Loves in the past, so probably Loves. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm going to have that up on um, my Aiden's pages. Um, help find Aiden Clune. It's a Facebook page, and you can you can ask to join. And we have we have all the updates and and uh, and and updated information about that. But that's where we've always met before. It's Loves Truck Stop and Wells, and and we that's where we get organized and sign everybody up. I'm glad you mentioned that because you can. You can, you know, find out from us too, like, you know, about the search coming up, but probably the best way, because Facebook, I don't, they don't really censor like YouTube does. Um, go to, you know, sign up on Facebook, um, you know, join. And uh, yeah, you, it's a lot easier. I think uh, Facebook, that way there's no middlemen. And uh, yeah, that way you can find out all the information direct. Um, so yeah, yeah, go check and out. And also if you go to his page and, and become a member, like if you see, Anybody that that looks like Aiden, I'm going to have um, a, a Google number and an email where you can put in tips. It's uh, find Aiden. I, I just made it, but I think it's find help uh, help find Aiden at gmail.com. Okay. And I'll have a, a number up there for tips and, and stuff. If anybody thinks they've seen them, there's been a handful. A lot of them haven't panned out, but you know we're still and we're you know if you think you've seen them just you know contact us please that's right it's just that just takes that one you know it never mm -hmm. you never know so mm -hmm. thank you yeah. thank you so much amy thank you thank you we'll be in, we'll be in touch so <laughs> okay. yeah we'll talk okay. to you later okay great thank all right you. thank you amy. no problem thank you okay. bye. bye bye go there we go all right that was awesome guys um let me see here i'm try to get some of the answers or some of the questions in chat um let's see here had aiden have a favorite area um he was kind of out of town um he he, he was more from some sonoma county california um his favorite area out there um what was the name of the bay i already some of the but they, yeah it's like well uh, yeah Oh, B, sorry, sorry, I have to look up that bay, the bay again. Um, that was his favorite spot over in Sonoma, but he was out of town over here in Wells. So he would probably wouldn't have been too, you know, really familiar with any areas around there. Um, but yeah, his mom finding the tracks headed north on that ridge really seemed like a good indication of where he was heading, kind of back towards the freeway, maybe. So hopefully, um, I know there's a you know, kind of maybe thinking his tracks might still not be around. Uh, the crazy thing is though, when they do get that deep, like three inches deep, you know, when the, when you're, when it really sinks into the mud like that, they can stay for like years. Like the tracks will stick around for a long time. Um, it just, it just really depends um, on the conditions really. So, I mean, at this point, yeah, there's probably not going to be very many tracks left, but all isn't lost. There still might be some, you know, some tracks that we can pick up on and still, and like she's saying, you know, there's, they haven't really found anything. So, you know, anything, a wrapper, you know, a, a sock he was wearing or, you know, a shoe, anything like that, you know, to point us in the right direction that we're, we're actually going in the right direction, you know, anything like that. Um, 
really is is really what we're out there looking for right now um so yeah so that was um yeah that was really nice that she was able to uh, explain a lot more of the details of the case um than what than what i had known so yeah so thank you guys for uh for being here for that so um let me get some water sorry you should show them your shirts the mm. new shirts we got oh yeah bazing um here we go yeah so check out these are the well this is a sweatshirt um here take off, oh, yeah take off the, you have your shirt on underneath i think you do <laughs> okay it's coming back on here there we go okay yeah we got the search t-shirts now hold on these are the official bring them home search team shirts oh you can't see it <laughs> oh there you go now you can see it hang on the mic's right there. There you go. Now you can see it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so yeah, these are the new, new, uh, the new shirts. Um, ba Zing and her husband made for us. Um, let's turn down this so it's not blowing out everybody's ears. There we go. So yeah, we have these up on our. Oh, actually, you know what? I think I have to publish it still. Um, yeah, I have to uh, publish it on our Etsy page. But these are going to be up on Etsy. Um, we're selling them for twenty dollars for small through XL, and then I think double XL are twenty-two, and then triple is like twenty-three. But um, yeah, all the proceeds are going to help to go towards search efforts, so we can get out there and get searching and gas money, all this stuff. It it takes a lot. Uh, so big thank you to Bozing and her husband for helping us uh, make these and for making uh, helping us make these, making these, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So we'll grab a pink one so we can show the Yeah, and we have so they're they're bright colors, so you're gonna stand out um if you are out there searching or if you're out there uh looking for people, that's why we did them in orange, uh like highlighter orange, yellow, and pink. So that way everybody's gonna stand out really bright. The and pink it's got, is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's got our logo. It's got our logo here on the front and, and on the sleeve. And on the sleeve. Yeah. And it's a nice quality t-shirt, gilded in comfortable comfortable oh there we go oh hold on it's flashing <laughs> that's funny the pink is weird because of the pink i know pink and oh there the, you go there we go so that's what the pink looks like yeah these are awesome oh, grab a yellow one too yeah. so that way at least we'll be identifiable out there <laughs> um but yeah so yeah, we got to get that that going on Etsy. I forgot. I totally forgot about I that. I thought we did it last night. But yeah. One hundred percent cotton buzzing. Like, yeah. Here's the. Here's the yellow one. Oh shoot. Yeah, the yellow one really. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Woohoo! Works. <laughs> They're awesome. Search team. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> really cool. Like she did so much. She did. If you notice, this font is the same font we use in our videos. She did like. She had to do extra work just to get that font, you know, on there. So Thank cool you. stuff. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, <laughs> Buzzing. Um, yeah. So we have, uh, yeah, we got a lot of uh, things going on right now. Um, geez. We have our interview coming up with Collier Landry um, on Friday. So make sure you guys go over to that interview, um, that, uh, that live stream that's already up and uh, hit the like button, share it and get it out there too because yeah we're just trying to spread awareness about all this um all this stuff going on so um yeah oh we have a you have a video premiering tomorrow oh yeah yeah we have a video premiering tomorrow too um a search video it's the part one basically of the hillside where i find the coyote pups so um i'm not going to find them in this video so sorry everybody um but yeah i i'll be finding them in probably like three or four videos maybe we'll see but um but yeah it's there's a ton of footage i gotta get through um and edit and all that stuff so um but yeah it's like the first of uh those videos are coming out tomorrow um it's like a old mining area that's right by dylan's farm the grain shed don hatley's loosen pond all in that area it's right there so that's 
why we searched over in that mining area. Um, so it's, you know, it's the place we haven't been to yet. So um, yeah, check it out. That'll be tomorrow. Um, if you haven't checked out the preview yet, go check out the preview because yeah, I've been doing those now on the, on the uploads. So you can check out like, I think it's like a little bit over a minute or so of the video that's going to be coming out tomorrow. So you can see what's, uh, what's uh, like going to be happening in the video. So I don't know. It's kind of cool. I like the previews. I like the previews. <laughs> we have fun. <laughs> Time to add on a studio to the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One day, Spiral. <laughs> yeah. The parakeets <laughs> agree. Oh, Kane wants to show her Lego. Oh, cool. That's okay. Kane's got a Lego creation. Hold on. Uh, that was so when she was saying that Aiden liked Legos and Thomas the train, it's like mm -hmm. thinking of our kids, you know, yeah. just uh, like our right? kids. Star Wars Legos. Star that's Wars Legos. Said, that's my kid. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so Star it's, this is the Ardennes forest, correct? Kano? Correct. Yes. Okay, and there is a, I can't, I can't remember what type of cannon that is, but it's a artillery yeah. cannon, a tank destroyer cannon. A oh, tank sure. destroyer Sorry. rounds. Oh, there we go. And there's a machine gunner running to the battlefield. This dude, <laughs> he's oh yeah, I see him. This guy. Gun. He's uh, running. That's cool, buddy. This guy. Action. He's like the colonel because he has the cool handgun. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Love you, that's like pretty accurate from World War Two too. That's even the German handgun. Yeah. <laughs> nice, dude. Very attention to very detailed. <laughs> That's good, dude. Well, it's Sandy's birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Sandy. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, have, have a good birthday. Yeah, everybody oh, wish Sandy happy birthday. That's awesome. <laughs> Booyah. Is it a howitzer? John asks. Okay. Is it a the howitzer, the big, the big gun? Or is that, what was that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the howitzer is the machine gun right here. Yeah, is that what your is that what your big one was? Yeah, this is my big one, the howitzer. Uh, I think the how the, the howitzer is a big, big one. I think that, that's the one he calls. That. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, kiddo. Okay. Howitzer. We remember, like in the documentary, it's like the howitzer machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? That um. Okay. So yes, yeah, I think we've talked about we that stuff. Score. Um. Yeah. Um. Still working on the interview coming up with uh, Highland. Uh, yeah, it's just, there's been a lot going on. Craziness. Um, yeah, we, uh, we, yeah, we, we dropped the coyote pups off at, um, at a wildlife rescue. So they're like, and they're going to be rehabilitated and put out back into the wild again. So we're excited about that. Um, and they'll be like sending us pics and updates about how they're doing. So it was kind of sad that they, they had to leave, but, um, at the same time, it's like what's best for for them. So, yeah. Because you know that if we would have kept, them, uh, they would have be been our little three pets coyote dogs. Yeah. Now they can actually go back into the wild yeah. and be wild animals. What they're meant to do. Yeah. You know, they're they get to be who they're meant to be now. It's a better thing. Yeah, yeah. for them and us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, love yeah. bug! Just love bug! Happy, happy, birthday. Birthday. happy birthday! Everybody's Yay. birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> so Sandy, love bug. Happy birthday. Yeah. Any more birthdays? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So if anybody's, yeah, I don't know if uh, I feel like everybody's like all over the country, but I think there's some people that are maybe out here in, in our area. If you want to come out and search for Aiden, that's going to be really awesome. It's going to be May, looks like 14th through the 21st. Right, I saw Wanda. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be awesome. So it'll be a big push this uh, this spring coming out here for, for Aiden, which is really cool. Because, you know, I feel like, yeah, um, like this whole last year, it's been kind of eclipsed by Dylan's a little bit because we've been, we're just so close to where it happened here and out in Lucent and everything that we've been just focusing on that. We really haven't... <laughs> We've, I mean, we've, we've known about Aiden's clay case and we, we, you know, our hearts go out to him, but it's just like, we didn't, we didn't know we didn't, or have like really the time to dive into it. So her, her being able to, um, fill us in with all these, you know, developments and everything that's been going on was really awesome. Mm -hmm. So when we go out there, you know, I, 
I feel like we'll have a better understanding of, you know, what we're looking for, or what, you know, knowing what he was wearing, you know, um, you know, knowing that he, he could have had an iPad with him or, you know, an, a phone and, you know, his wallet. So, or no, not his wallet, his keys. Um, so, so yeah. So Wanda asked Thanks by girl. <laughs> I try not to, I try not to, um, I try, I, I might, yeah, I'm trying to get better at my, uh, interviewing <laughs> <laughs> skills here. Uh, but yeah, I feel like if I just stay out of the way and let people talk, it's probably best. Uh, <laughs> we're still very new to this whole YouTube. Thing. Yeah. I don't know what we're doing half the time. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, I always, it, it always really bugs me when interviews interrupt, um, people to say something that really doesn't have anything oh it really bugged well, me yes day, yes yeah. the long crime network where it was like cops and cocktails and they're like interrupting yeah they're, they're like interrupting to say like joking things when like somebody's telling like a really serious story it's like why you're not funny first off second off this is a serious story <laughs> i'm just i'm sorry i can't when when somebody is an interviewer and they're doing stuff like that it bugs me so thank you spy girl i appreciate that i'm <laughs> trying not to uh, <laughs> Wanda asked annoy anybody the same area is going so it's about so it's about 90 miles as the crow flies i did it i did it on google maps on google earth sorry and it's about 90 miles as, as the crow flies from where dylan is i'll show you here on google earth since kimber it's right there just kidding. i'm just messing <laughs> okay so this is where aiden went missing down here in this mountain range okay so we scroll out. I thought that said Space Mountain, like Disneyland. Oh. Spruce Mountain. <laughs> okay, There's so Montello. Montello. Here we go. So why do you have to be right there? Box. This box is on my nerves right now. Okay. Uh, okay, so. Oops. Right there. Yeah. 70 miles, it's saying from montello but yeah road road wise it's like um a little over two hours 113 miles is what it's saying yeah so it's about two hours away from where we are um oops what did i just do <laughs> got rid of my window uh so it's a little bit like two hours or so, yeah two hours away so it's not really super close to us uh, i wish i wish we were closer um like if we lived in wells it'd be like half hour yeah. yeah like so um so yeah anybody out in wells um uh who isn't named ty come on out no. <laughs> handle us we'll see you out there um <laughs> sorry um yeah it'll be it'll be good um anyone in san diego That's awesome. have an extra seat oh hey linda um anyone in san diego um be going that might have an extra seat available would love to go can help with gas and driving oh that's so cool yeah hey if anybody's coming out from san diego that would be awesome linda can be your car buddy linda yeah <laughs> uh, let's see here it takes two hours to get to the store from up in the mountains um geez yeah yeah and that's another thing too so once you get down in there it's probably good two hours from here and then you got a good maybe i don't know hour or so driving in the back roads like the dirt roads like she was saying it's like really bad you need four by fours to get in there um so getting in there is probably going to take a, at least another hour or so so especially to that burn there's spot, yeah because that's where i mean the burn spots like the most recent spot they found his footprint so they would probably start up by the burn yeah. spot and then go north like she was saying. so i mean just one day if you're that's that's a good six hours of driving yeah. um so what we might do i'm thinking maybe we'll we have some time before may maybe we'll get like a tent and uh maybe we'll, we'll just camp, camp out yeah maybe we'll just camp out Love. for a few days um it be warm enough, though? hopefully eh, it should be warm enough we'll see i don't know we'll have to we'll, <laughs> we'll see yeah we'll find out <laughs> Um, but yeah, maybe we'll just do that because that'll be a lot easier than having to go back and forth. Yeah, make a little camping camping trip out of it. Campfire stories. 
All right, guys. Oh, hello. That was awesome yeah. came on. Oh, what's up, Wanda? Sorry. Trying to see everybody. <laughs> cool. I think that was everything we need to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. Um, yeah, if there's anything else, um, no, I think that was it. Right? Tomorrow. Okay. We have tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow's the yeah, tomorrow's the premiere. So go check that out. Yeah, I'm still blonde. My hair Camera's, just looks crazy. Yeah. Can you see it? Oh, there you go. Now you can see me. <laughs> <laughs> she's like Cheshire Cat. You just see her face like pop in and then <laughs> like she just like goes out. Oh gosh. I love that's doesn't cool. he smile? He smiles. Yeah, he, he smiles too. Like, like a creepy smile though. And it was like in. your smile. I'm not saying your smile was creepy, but you kind of Cheshire cat and me there a little bit. When do we get the dog? I finger crossed it soon. Um, <laughs> we're, we're just, we're waiting to hear from them about finding the dog. Um, it's just taken a while. Um, basically they're looking for a cadaver dog that they're going to be able to train and get out to us as soon as possible. So they, she has um, some like younger pups right now that are really small, you know, but that's going to be a long time before they're ready. So, um, she's trying, she's trying to find an older dog that she can train to get ready for, um, certification and everything quicker, but it's just a little bit hard right now, uh, finding those dogs. So we're just, uh, hoping that she finds one soon. And, you know, that's all we can do is just, you know, we pray about it mm. every Monday and are like, did you hear anything yet? And she keeps we, up. I told you, well, I, you know, we're still looking like she, I yeah, think we're kind she's of like, a bugger, but I mean, yeah, we do <laughs> bugger, but, um, <laughs> but she's <laughs> like, yeah, we, uh, she's like, you know, I promise I haven't forgotten about you guys. Um, you know, like you guys are, you know, basically like I'm, I'm not, she's like basically telling us like, she's not, not looking. It's just, she hasn't been able to find anything yet. So it's, um, uh, I know it's on my mind a lot too. I just really want to be able to move forward with the cadaver dog, but we just, we have to, it is what it is. We have to wait and, you know, um, at the price that they're offering it for, like the 11.3, I haven't been able to find any other trainer that can out, you know, offer a cadaver dog for that price. And so, actually that company, their cadaver dog price actually went up. Yeah, their price went up. And so they're honoring that price for us. So um, <laughs> anywhere we... It would just be a lot more money anywhere else we went um, to. So, yeah. So we just gotta, gotta just gotta be patient. It'll happen when it's when it's supposed to happen. So, but um, yeah. Keep keep bugging me about it though. Keep checking in because I, you know, <laughs> we uh, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm excited. I can't wait. Oh, so. I put the Etsy store um, link inside chat for you, Mary. Indiana very Indiana says uh, I'm on replay but it's good up to now just let us know if it starts to go south the timestamp I'm just kidding mom. no she did yeah Amy did yeah, such a great job speaking and was able to tell so much about Aiden's life and about you know who he was as a person rather than it just being you know a name and a face that you see as a missing person you know it's it's, you know, it, it, it hit me a lot more hearing the details about how he was, you know, it's just, I identified a lot with Aiden, um, you know, growing up, uh, you know, not, don't, not knowing your dad, um, you know, being picked on, uh, you know, not always feeling like you fit in, uh, with the people, you know, in school. So I totally get that, you know, it's, uh, you know, and then <laughs> the gluten intolerance, uh, you know, affecting his his mood and how he is, you know, it sounds like maybe that, you know, diet is like a huge thing, you know, it's not really stressed about enough, but it's like a huge, huge thing in our moods and everything like that. I wonder, you know, had, has, what his diet, you know, could have been something that was playing into, you know, his, his mental state, you know, like since it had happened before, you know, when he was younger, you know, that it was bugging, it was, you know, making him act differently. I wonder if it was something when he was older that maybe it was really messing with him again. You know, you know, there's a lot that it's just like, I don't know. I just related to, to, I related to him a lot, you know, with the, the stuff he was going through. So, you know, it's just like, it just is, uh, I don't know. It's, it, 
it's sad to hear, you know, his mom, you know, you could, you could tell she just cares about him so much and just wants to find him. So, you know, just wants to find any information, you know, it's just, so, um, I think, you know, if we can get out here and, and, you know, get out there and help, you know, that's, it's what, that's what we're going to do. So, you know, it's, um, it's going to be, it's going to be good this, uh, this spring to get out there. Cause it is winter is just so depressing. It just does get you down kind of sometimes it's like <laughs> it's just been so yeah gloomy and cold um we're ready for the spring to get here ready for the you know warm air to get here and get out and get searching again and moving around so um yeah yeah so i just thought um, it was so sweet that he wanted her to read to him that like yeah. made me cry right there like Oh. Yeah. So, like, yeah, he just wanted to hear his mom's voice read him the book before, you know, you know, he was, he was clearly, you know, going through something, you know, and it's just like, it just, you know, it is, it is a shame that there wasn't more that, you know, people could do to help him. You know, it's just, it's just, crazy it's just gonna, you know, go everything that he had to, yeah, it's just, hopefully, you know, hopefully we can find this, you know, hopefully it's a good, you know, ending and everything like that, but we just want to get out there and find s something that'll lead us in the right direction to, you know, finding them, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's, that's our, that's our goal here <laughs> is basically, and also to spread awareness too, because, you know, there was, um, tend to life. Uh, she does really good videos. Um, she did one on Aiden Clune and she, there was a couple things that were just, uh, that were just weren't correct in the video. Like it being like sugar Hill, um, in Wendover, the Chevron that he was meeting Mike at when it was actually the sugar Hill in Salt Lake city. Like those details are just kind of important, but, um, you know, it's easy, totally super easy to get them mixed up. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, so that's why I was like, was it the Sugar Hill and Wendover? And she's like, no, it was Sugar Hill and in, in Salt Lake City. So it's Salt Lake City that he met Mike at, not Wendover, um, which was originally I, I, you know, watched the Tend to Life video, and that's what you know she had said in that. So I was, that was one thing that we were able to kind of clear up. He met Mike over in Salt Lake City, and then um, kidnapped Mike, basically. And what had happened was it sounded like in the tend to life um she kind of went into the details a little bit more about that was um he had basically taken mike and mike was like what what's going on and he was just like we're going up to washington and mike's like well you know we could kind of plan a trip but we can't really go right now um you know but you know that'd be really cool to plan a trip you know sometime aiden and he just kind of kept driving and so mike got his phone out to like call somebody or text somebody like hey you know, I don't know what Aiden's doing right now or whatever, but Aiden tried to grab his phone. So he like, you know, pulled it away from him and then Aiden just stopped the car and told him to get out. So Mike gets out and then Aiden goes off. And, um, so that was, um, that was one part of the story that she didn't really go into, but, um, tend to life, um, kind of explained that a little bit more. So that's kind of what happened when that whole, you know, kidnapping thing happened. And, um, you know, it just really sounds like he was just kind of having like a mental break, you know, like he, there was something going on with him and it was just not right. Something was just not right. So yeah, it's just, um, it's just kind of, it's, it's unfortunate to hear, um, you know, that, that, that he was, you know, going through that. Um, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully we can, um, find some answers and, um, yeah, it makes think about you know, there are so many kids out there that during the whole COVID everything, yeah, they went they have all these issues now because of everything that they went through during all that time and being separated from friends and not going to school. Everything that like all a bunch of kids are going through all this kind of stuff. It's just sad, like just crazy. Yeah, yeah it's it's really hurting a lot of a lot of people, a lot of kids. Yeah, and it's like. I mean, they, they need, like, we're, like, designed to be social, you know, people, you know, to interact with each other, um, you know, to, to be yeah, you well, yeah, I mean, that's just, it's just part of human nature is being with each other, you know, so it's like this whole thing of, 
now everybody's suddenly, you know, stay back, get away. You know, it's like, it's kind of really, I think, messed with people. Um, Those are for young kids. Yeah. I know a lot of young kids that have, yeah. um, have some issues now because of everything that's gone on. Yeah. So it just, you know, we just, our hearts go out to them. Oh, Kane's got <laughs> Kane's got another battle scene here. <laughs> Sorry. This is the, the, these are the American troops defending the Arden Forest. The American troops. Nice. They got a bunker with a machine gun, a bazooka man, <laughs> a M1 gun. A bazooka man, I love it. Bazooka man right there, <laughs> yep. Love you, kid. Got the gunner. Nice, dude. <laughs> Tough love is a fine line. Yeah. 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 It's like everybody is uh, different, you know, everybody is, <laughs> is so different, you know, to, um, you know, I feel like sometimes with the, the system, they kind of try to treat everybody with a one size fits all when it's like, we're all so unique and differently made. It's like, sometimes it, all, it doesn't always work the best. But that's just kind of what the way it is, you know. So it's just, it's yeah, it is what it is. I don't know the answer. Love, that's the answer. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, you guys, you guys know what's up. So thank you guys so, um, so much for being with us and hanging out with us. And um, yeah, thank you guys. I hope, um, I hope that it's not, you know, we can we can talk about these stories and we can um, use it as a way to help bring awareness to these people. And it's not so much of a sad thing as like, you know, they're gone and forgotten. It's more of a, we're, you know, we're going to remember them and remember who they were and, you know, try to bring light, you know, to maybe a, you know, just a dark situation or a bad situation. You know, that's what, that's what I'd like to try to do with this is just hopefully, um, turn it into a good thing you know there's a lot there's a lot of bad stuff out there that you know yeah <laughs> yep, that's right battle of the bulge yeah I'm so check the email after this john yeah so thank you, you guys so much um, oh yeah say something about the family album Oh yeah, he if you said he sent me some videos. Okay, cool. Videos. If you have um pictures or videos or anything to send into the family album, go ahead and send them in. Kimber's gonna be putting that together. Earthworm album so, yeah. at gmail.com. Earthworm album. So yeah. If you're looking for another one of those videos. Yes, I'm gonna be doing that soon. Uh, I started it. I just haven't finished it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. No. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. We love you guys. Uh, hope you all have a, a nice, uh, I can't talk a nice rest of your day and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow and Friday because we have a big interview coming up with Coyer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's going to be super interesting. If you haven't checked out Coyer's uh, story, check him out. Um, it'd be good to get some background probably before you come into the interview. So you, <laughs> so you know who we're talking to, but yeah, if you haven't checked him out, um, Say a little yeah, basically, um, the uh, New Year's Eve, nineteen eighty nine. Um, he basically heard something when he was when he was asleep. Um, his his dad and his mom were fighting, and um, he heard a really big thud, um, a couple thuds. And then the next morning, he got up, and his dad had said that um, mommy had left and she wasn't coming back. Basically. And he, this didn't sit right with Coyer. He, he knew that his mom wouldn't ever just leave him. So basically he had to go on a mission of, he had to prove, he had to basically convince detectives that his father um, did something to his mom, you know, murder her. And he was like the only one he was like the driving force behind this investigation of catching his mom's murder as a 12 year old boy. Uh, I don't know, like if you can just 
wrap like it's hard for me to wrap my head around that like how how much pressure and how it's just insane of a situation that is that he was thrown into the situation of he had to like basically testify against his his own father in a in his 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 murder trial murder against his trial. against his mother and he was he had he was still living at home through like that whole month like it was like 24 days or something like that until he was put into um cps um so that whole time he was still living with his dad in fear of his life um like it's an insane story guys so um if yeah it's going to be really awesome to talk to him and to uh learn more about his story and everything like that so um yeah so anyways um that's going to be coming up on friday so uh, yeah, go check out Coyer. Subscribe to his uh, YouTube if you're not already subscribed. And yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, I, I'm I'm going long it now. It doesn't show its faces. It's the, oh. <laughs> it doesn't show on there. That's funny. They're censoring us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. You guys have a good night. Um, or uh, good morning, technically, I guess, if you're in uh, Australia. <laughs> Mama LJ. <laughs> And uh, Aussie Lana and all of our other uh, Australian women. Awesome. We have a few Australians. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, we love you guys, and uh, yeah, have a good night. Support. We love you all. We really couldn't do this without all of you guys. So thank you for all the love and support. It really means the world to us. It really does. Oh, hold on a second, Diane. Um, in the Ruby Marshes over by those mountains, you used to live back in 1973. They call it the alkali flats, pure powder. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, the poof, poof dirt. That's what they call yeah, it. We call it poof dirt. Poof dirt. <laughs> yeah, all that alkali. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's really bad. Like, I mean, there's some alkali dirt out here um, in the valley. Yeah, it's just there's patches of it. You know, it's just kind of crazy. Good night, guys. Okay, yeah, I'm out of here. Have Bye, a good everybody. good night. <laughs>